Oklahoma. The Sooner schooner is rolling across the plains. Oklahoma is unbeaten in rank number one. Their goal is as high as an elephant's eye to win their eighth national title. Today, UCLA attempts to spoil the dream. Now to John Saunders in New York. So who is the best team in the country? Less than a month into the season, a handful of teams are making a case that they are number one. Exhibit A features the Oklahoma Sooners, whose explosive offense has matched their world-class defense. Today, the UCLA Bruins try to punch a hole in their argument. Terry Bowden, as usual, and we are joined now by Craig James from ESPN and elsewhere for a player to be named later. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Glad to have you here with Tony, us. Uh, let's get right out of the gate. Who do you like winning the national championship or at least matching up? And, in? and I like the hospitality here. Let me pick first so you guys can pop <laughs> <Yeah>. me right. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to go with Oklahoma and USC. I think USC, strength of schedule. They need wins today from the Pac-10 over the Big Ten, so they've got that strength of schedule. How can they be the national champion if they can't be the conference champion? Last five <laughs> years, senior quarterback on the conference champion team and you like michigan and oklahoma, michigan, oklahoma. and i'm going to go one of each of you i like usc against michigan in the national championship we will be here all day long with scores and highlights plus we'll see you again at halftime something you will not want to miss right now let's join brent musburger welcome to the bcs spotlight game presented by adt it's a top rank Oklahoma Sooners against the UCLA Bruins here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for football in Norman, Oklahoma. And here come the Sooners. With Gary Danielson and Jack Root, I'm Brian Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. Tough spot today for UCLA. Not easy against this Oklahoma team, Gary. You're right, Brent, but UCLA has to take care of themselves first. They have a lot of self-inflicted wounds on offense. That's why they're last in the country. But this is no mid-major here. The cupboards are not bare. they got a sound defense. I expect they'll play well. On the Oklahoma side, quarterback Jason White is one of the best stories in all of college football. He has overcome two knee surgery. You know, sometimes when you lose something, you find out it's very important to you, and I think that's what happened to Jason White. He had those two back-to-back -back years where he lost his career with knee surgeries, back-to-back -back years. He's come back now more focused and ready to play, and there's no one in the country that's playing better at quarterback. Carl Durrell, his first year as a Bruin head coach, matches up against Bob Stoops to the Sooners. The kickoff is next. First year UCLA head coach, Carl Durrell. Coach, this is a massive scene that you come into. How do you get your troops really pumped up? What'd you tell them in the locker room about this game? Obviously, they're excited about this opportunity. It's a great, lively crowd against the number one ranked team in the country. We want to see how we measure up against them, so our kids are excited. Good luck, coach. Thank you. Durrell's Bruins will handle the ball first as OU deferring after they've won the toss. And so the Bruins will go out on offense. Back deep, Maurice Drew, the five foot eight inch freshman. Trey DiCarlo with the ball on the tee now for the Sooners. Underway in Norman. Drew in the end zone, hesitates, and now he comes out. Short of the 15 yard line, not a good decision. Let's meet the Bruins' young quarterback. Hello, my name is Drew Olson, quarterback of the UCLA Bruins, and this is my seventh start. He took over because of the injury sustained by Matt Moore. The Bruins still not sure when Moore will be back. John Shara, the sophomore, is the backup for Drew Olson today. So he will bring the Bruins out for their first series of the game, short of the 15-yard line. And again, what these Bruins will need, a little ball control, absence of mistakes. Ebel is the running back behind the fullback. Ebel with the game's first carry, and he's stuffed by Lehman. So let's send you to New York. All right, John, thank you. And here is the long-reaching handoff to Manuel White, who's coming off a big game. Now we take a look at the Outback Steakhouse, UCLA lineup. The offensive line, 117th this offensive ranked in the country. So this is a point of pride for these fellas today. The running game simply needs first downs. We've seen Ebel and White already carry. As far as the passing game is concerned, they've got to catch the football. They've had too many drops so far two games into the season. And right away now, 
They bring it up with their first third down. They need three yards. Junior Taylor was a slot back. Olsen drops back underneath, short of that first down marker you could see. And so they are forced to punt as Pat Norton, the junior fullback, slips out into the pass pattern that time. And by the way, the Bruins will have to punt it away. Chris Cluey, number 39, trots onto the field. 15 punts so far this season. He has had one 57-yarder and a very dangerous return man. Back deep, that's number 28, Antonio Perkins of the top-ranked Sooners. He is averaging only 6.2 with a long of 18, but at any point, he can turn it loose. Drives Perkins back inside the 25-yard line. Beats the gunner to the right side, and he is brought down by Brandon Schiller, the leading tackler on this UCLA team, playing on the special team. Comes up and makes the spot. So now we will meet the Sooners quarterback. Hi, I'm Jason White, and after two injury plague seasons, I'm looking forward to a big year. Absolutely remarkable. ACL both knees. One interception in his last 119 attempts, bringing the Sooners now up to the line of scrimmage. Three and oh. The running game got going a little bit against Fresno State. Ronaldo works. Off to the right, opening in the gun, and almost intercepted by Havner. The linebacker came over there. The Outback Steakhouse lineups now for the Oklahoma Sooners. They've allowed only two sacks. It was back in the opening game. Alabama did not sack Jason White in that showdown. Running game, as we've said, their biggest concern. Works, and Kiwan Jones will be in there. J-Day Runnels will be the fullback at times. But here are their weapons, and folks, they're dandies back there. This group could become the best set of wide receivers in the nation. Brandon Jones, second and ten, and White now figures to put it up for the first time. Does not. Comes right back with the running game. Now let's talk about this UCLA defense because the strength of the team is that front four right there with the ball twins on either side. The linebackers, Chiller, we've already met him on the special team, the leading tackler. And then in the defensive backfield, a certain future first round draft choice, Matt Ware. Look at his size, folks. 6'3, 223. Also a minor league baseball player. But this man has got NFL in his future. He is a great one. It's the key to this Bruin team this year third and seven they play defense like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers they stuff all the running lanes and they make it very tough now let's see what Oklahoma can do on third and seven can they answer with the first down they do an accurate pass on a Mark Clayton the five foot 11 inch junior and Emmanuel makes the stop for the Bruins and it's first and ten for Oklahoma the amazing thing when you talk about the Oklahoma receivers and talking about how strong they are UCLA defense does not like to go nickel, and when they're trying to match up with these receivers, you just run down in the zone and hook up. There's nobody there, and Jason White, accurate. He's been accurate all year, as I said. No one throwing the ball better than him in college football right now. Now, again, on first down, we see the Sooners back in the shotgun. Four rushmen for UCLA. There's that inside handoff. Used to feature, of course. Then Emmanuel and Havner come up and uh, stuff it. And Ronaldo Works was the running back. Again, I was looking to see if Kiwan Jones had come onto the field for that play, but I, Works has gone at running back here. I was early going, Gary. I was looking for Quentin Griffin to run that ball. Exactly. We've been seeing see him for so many years run that play. Exactly. UCLA's defense, though, does not give up the big play. You watch them. They'll let things happen in front of them and wait for Oklahoma to make a mistake if they do. Jones with his helmet on is watching. Second down. And throwing underneath just short of the first down, coming back to Blake again. And that is Havner, the outside linebacker, number 41, very active here in the early going. Watch the middle linebacker right here. The safeties will stay wide and double team the wideouts. Now watch this middle linebacker, how deep he gets. Justin London, he's going to get deep, deep, 30 yards deep on the play. He's actually the third safety on the play. And that's part of the strategy that Larry Kerr defensive coordinator employs to keep that ball happening in front of him third and short so you see the two tight end formation for the Sooners and that is Runnels the fullback checking with the tailback and we've got a timeout call by Oklahoma so immediately they use a timeout against this UCLA defense Oklahoma. 
Get into the game with Enhanced TV at ESPN.com. Play along, get up to the minute stats, and enter to win an all new SUV. Well, there is Bob Stoops, 14 0 in the month of September. Barry Switzer went 21 games without a loss here, but he did tie his second game played in September. That was back in 1973 against USC. So, third down and two, Jason White. The senior quarterback who can apply for an extra year through a medical hardship if he would like to is up after talking with the coaches on the sideline. Short and again that UCLA defense with Chiller leading the way. Number 11 and Jared Page coming in. So if they go to punt this ball, they've had a lot of trouble with the kicking game. They've had four punts blocked already this year. And uh, so they have... Well, that might be part of the thinking process, I guess. Fourth and short, you have just as good. If you're going to go for it on fourth and ten against Alabama, you might as well go fourth and one on the 30. Tommy Harris in as a tight end. Defensive tackle Tommy Harris lines up on the right side of the formation. Ronaldo works for the first down. Right behind Tommy Harris, and he rooted him out uh, offense about as well as he roots him out on defense. Harris is right, excuse me, Harris is right over here behind the guy, and he roots him right out. Power play, fourth and a yard, just comes off the ball, and that's a pretty easy read for Works to get the first down. Tommy Harris, who was slowed by injuries a year ago, one of the most celebrated defensive linemen in all of college football, comes in there with a run paving block, a little bit new wrinkle, short drop by White, and the pass is blocked at the 25-yard line by Brandon Jones, who had been their leading receiver coming into the game as we check in with the Jack. Well, Brent, when you watch the defense that the Bruins are putting forward, you can see that defensive coordinator Larry Kerr is living up to what he told us. He said he wants zero big plays today. He said so much so that we're going to try and keep the play in front of us. All week they practice, Gary, tackling during practice. An awful lot of teams don't do that. Now, they didn't bring them down to the ground, but they did wrap their arms around them to try and get ready for this offense. Well, Larry Kerr was an outstanding defensive coordinator with Sonny Lubach at Colorado State. Who did they study under? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's a rough D at UCLA. Timeout. Standing Sentinel at the entrance of Van Fleet Oval, commemorating this great university's 100th birthday here in Norman, Oklahoma. Man, is this weather gorgeous for a Sumo football game here today. Scoreless. And after that first down now, trying to keep the chains moving and just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes Jason White. Up to the line of scrimmage. Back with the shotgun, running back on either side. Got a five-man rush on the blitz. Cannot get there. Right sideline, caught for a first down. So White, who has been lethally accurate so far this season, goes to the far sideline and hits Jawan Rankins, one of his super soft receivers, for the first down, 12 yards. Watch how well Jason White looks left, keeps his eyes there, and then turns back and throws right. Left, 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 switch to the right, and throws an out route to the right. That's a guy that knows his reads, knows his secondary reads, and uh, Brent uh, knows that offensive line. I'll give him some time. Absolutely. Jimon <laughs> Jones now in as the running back. That inside handoff, a familiar play with the Sooners, and Dave Ball, one of the twins from Dixon, California. Dave and brother Matt anchor this defensive line, and it is a good defensive line. So, Gary, what's the upset formula here? Well, today? I think number one is, as Jack said, they got to tackle. No yards after catch or after first contact. Win something big. I would say the special teams would be their best chance. First down. They don't want to play Oklahoma in third and long either way and rattle them. Oklahoma has to believe somehow that UCLA has a chance. They got a rattle, a sack, a fumble, a return. Keep, get them in the game. This is the 11th play of this drive. They're back in second down and seven. And there they come back now with work to the 47. Breaks free to the end zone. Touchdown. Oklahoma scores. Ronaldo works. And that's the running game that they have been looking for here. I mean, they really paved that high. Touchdown run. Well, you give this Sooner team a running game like.
like this, and they are going to be rough to deal with the rest of the way. I thought the Bruins had this thing pretty well defensed. He came off the left side, missed tackle right there by Baschetti, and then all of a sudden, you get works into the end zone. Missed tackles will kill you when you're trying to play a good offensive football team. So now for the extra point, Trey DiCarlo, left-footed kicker, and he makes it 7-0. Did you see this paving block? Number 70, Kelvin Shishan, 6'5", 303 pounds, a sophomore. Watch number 70. Blow it open. Touchdown, Oklahoma. The Nissan drive summary, an impressive performance by Ronaldo Works, averaging five yards a carry and the touchdown as the Sooners go 57 yards in four and a half minutes. Now the Bruins must respond in this game. You do not want to fall two, three touchdowns down to the Sooners here. Nobody knows it better than Carl Durrell over on the far sideline. The last time he appeared here, he came as a player, a wide receiver. UCLA and Oklahoma only played each other twice, and they have lost both times, once in Pasadena and the second time with Durrell as the wide receiver here. The youngster drew deep in the end zone, takes the knee, and uh, Kansas State in trouble. Let's check in now with John. During upset across the plains, one of the sleepers in the drive for this year's Nokia Sugar Bowl, Kansas State, falls by the wayside early. But remember, you can't overcome a September loss. And there they put the ball in the hands of Craig Bragg against this defense. And all I can say is good luck Bruins against this defensive front. I mean, these guys are awesome up there, led by Tommy Harris. Here is one of the big stories. Lance Mitchell out for the season because of an injured knee. Young Wayne Chambers steps in there. He's quite a story. Jack Arrude will have that. Now, Derek Strait, and the Sooners cannot afford to lose him for the year. A little bit of a gimpy leg. He started 43 consecutive games. He's out. Eric Bassley starts on that corner. And now Young Chambers. The man in the middle, facing second and four. The Bruins will test it. They jump back in there with Manuel White, a bigger running back for a first down, right into the middle of the field. And uh, Jack, let's let's check up on Young Chambers. That's quite a story that this that this guy's even playing for the show. Oh, indeed it is, Brent. During the offseason, Wayne Chambers went to a party, like so many of us do, and in the middle of it, a fight broke out, and Wayne and several other people tried to get involved to break up the fight. Someone drew a gun, he found himself shot in the abdomen. The battle back from that injury has been phenomenal, and now he finds him start starting as a middle linebacker. Number 15, and in the middle now for the Sooners, replacing Mitchell, the leading tackle on this Oklahoma team. Coming now with the bigger back, White, giving him a little sturdier performer, and Dante Nicholson, the strong safety, and Chambers over to make that particular stop. Nicholson carrying a big burden, a JC transfer, one of the most impressive players in the junior college competition a year ago, heavily recruited out of California, and uh, he's selected to come here to Oklahoma, and he has been force-fed right into a very complex defensive scheme. The two defensive coordinators, Mike Stoops and Brent Venables, telling us that he's handling it very well, but it has not been easy. Second down and 10 now with 7.15 to go in the opening quarter. Drew Olson for the Bruins, fires incomplete. Misfiring on that pass, a lack of accuracy. Everybody rolling, dreaming, hoping. Kansas State with a tough, tough loss. Florida loses their second game of the year. You figure with two losses, you can't come back. This man, of course, not going to be judged on this season. Durrell needs to put the program together at UCLA. They still got some good athletes. Here comes Olson. That nice little swing pass and juggled but held on to by White. That was a nice run after the catch. The Sooners did not hit him as he touched it. Brandon Everidge, very active free safety, finally up to bring him down. That was a really nice touch by Drew Olson on that one. They dropped the end with Manuel White as he came out, and Olson put it right on stride. One of the more difficult passes to throw at a quarterback, that little back coming out of the backfield. Watch, this had to be threaded in nicely. And Manny White, who's came through the last game, catches this one, turns up, juggles it, keeps his balance. And uh, you believe this guy didn't even touch the ball against Colorado? They have to double up in tackles. McCloskey and Mosler, that offensive line, doing their job. They come right back now with number 29, Manuel White. So if they can move the chains, the Bruins might be able to stay in this game. Top of the hour now, and we look back on what has happened here so far. They had to keep the drive going, and 
Ronaldo works picked it up on fourth down and then the 15 yard run for the touchdown behind the clearing block by Shashan. So Kelvin blows it open, works does the rest. Now it's second down and four, and it's a healthy four here for the Bruins. Back they come with White. White muscles toward that yellow line. Ball loose on the ground. No question about it. You can see that they whether he was down. The official with the signal. You can see it very clearly in your picture. And uh, that was Eric Sire over there. There's, there's Eric Bianami right there hugging his guy, saying, We need you all day today. Right Probably the coach and uh, he came down here of course not only as a player but also as a coach when he was up at Colorado. And I'm impressed with UCLA trying to take it physically to Oklahoma. You can see the game. Steve Axman told us that to play Oklahoma and the ball look they were said his knee was down before it came out to play Oklahoma and their speed. You must try to cover them up at the line of scrimmage and not let them have space to run. Once they get run at full speed, they're tough to handle. So far, even in third and long, they're sticking with a basic formation and making Oklahoma play the run. If they continue to play and run the ball on first down, they have a chance. Well, they have three first downs in this game already, the Bruins, and moving the chains is critical. You're keeping the ball away from them. Play fake now by Olsen. Stands in the pocket and throws it deep and incomplete. Throwing over the wide receiver, but also over two defensive backs who were back there. And uh, we asked Drew Olsen the uh, mood of this uh, UCLA team. This is a great challenge. Uh, you know, people, you know, we're one of the last ranked offices in the country. And, uh, you know, obviously they're one of the top. So, you know, it's a chance for us to make a statement and, uh, you know, erase the last two weeks. Yeah, they are dead last, not one of them. They have won 17, and they're not happy about that. Let me tell you that. They, they got a lot to prove here, and he's three of five. And then now it's second down and 10, just across midfield. Offensive line giving him time. And the Bruins recover very alertly. Was that Mosler coming through yeah, there? Absolutely. Oh, no, it was uh, Ifsayev. Ifsayev, the 288-pound junior, one of the anchors in that offensive line, dives in there and recovers it. This is the West Coast offense that Carl Durrell is trying to employ here. Quick, five-step drops, hits Mercedes Lewis, a tight end, wide receiver type player. He's known for his acrobatic catches, but he doesn't want to be known for those as Dante Nicholson came in there and made the play. Third down and four. Slot down to the left, and Olsen looks for him. Right at the marker, reaching for it. First down, and extending across is Junior Taylor, the sophomore wide receiver. And, folks, that is the fourth first down of this quarter for the Bruins against this Oklahoma defense. So Durrell's team pretty well prepared for this defense here in the early going. A 10-play drive right now. Ball control drive. You want to keep possession here against the Sooners. You're a three-touchdown underdog. Keep the chains moving. Do the little things because it's not going to be easy, especially when you're on the road before this packed house in Norman. Two tight ends in again. That's the game plan early. Come back with the big back. So Darrell preferring white here in the early going. Lucas Perkins this uh, expanded stadium, Memorial Stadium, Owen Field. The look down or from a blimp high up. You could not have a better football Saturday at Norman, Oklahoma. But this is a big game in America, folks. Hand off now to Moore, and I cannot tell you how impressed I am here in the early going by this offensive line. Vieira, Ifseyev, McCloskey. Mosili and Eddie Blanton are doing the job in the early going. While I spoke about the uh, the Blimp folks, that's the uh, Bloomin' Onion one up there, the Outback Steakhouse Airship, specializing in college football, PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout 2003. The crew had a good time last night over at the uh, Outback Steakhouse. We enjoyed not one but two of those Bloomin' Onions the crew did. <laughs> it's third down and three now. Let's see what the Bruins come up with here. Nothing doing. The middle of that OU defense jumps in there. Corey Klein, one of the defenders, helping to stuff that along with Lynn Magruder. So now Darrell and the Bruins face a fourth down decision with the ball just shy of the 30-yard line. Darrell's crew 
They've only got 10 men on the field. They don't have a wing on the left side. UCLA should take a timeout, or can you get him in? Yes, there Justin is. Justin Medlock to kick the two field goals against Illinois to win the game. Nails this one. Looking good. Got it. Bruins are on the scoreboard. They can build on that with a 47-yard field goal by the young man who won last week's game with a pair, Justin Medlock. Successful all the way. Besides three points, they had a, almost a six-minute drive, and they proved to Oklahoma that they can move the ball. Two thirty-five here in the opening quarter, and of course, so many things going on. John's told you about Kansas State losing, so on the uh, Valvoline halftime show coming up, I'm uh, sure that uh, he will show you the highlights with that game, and uh, we'll hear what uh, Terry Bowden, the newest member of the team, Craig James, have to say about it. Here at seven-three now, Oklahoma with a four-point lead and two thirty-five to go in the opening quarter. You know, as much confidence as this gives the UCLA offense, Brent, I think it's got to help their defense just as much. Defense has been playing great for UCLA, and now they see that their offense can help them out a bit. Let's go down below to Jack. Brent, you hear a lot of times about players wanting to transfer. Well, that's the case with Justin Medlock. He wanted to leave UCLA, but not because of football. He wanted to leave because he found out how hard it was to get into the School of Communications. You see, Medlock feels like he wants to replace you, Brent, someday up in the booth, or at least be on ESPN Sports Center. <laughs> Long about 10 years, Jack. I'll be ready to retire to the mountains with you, partner. Well, the longest drive of the season for UCLA. And the Bruins here have kept themselves in the thick of it. They did not get blown out. And as Gary told you, the defense with a much needed rest. You don't want those big fellas out there all day long. Here's Lincoln and the fine young wide receivers. And a sharp tackle. So Laurier, number 31, brings him down. And we check in with Michigan. Wolverines to try first out there on Eugene. Not easy against a Mike Bellotti coach team. Here it's first and ten. Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners. On a fake by White. Firing deep right side. Crosses midfield with the completion. And down is Mark Clayton at the 30-yard line with a gain of 47 yards. White to Clayton. How about UCLA's defense? The longest pass play they've given up all year is 27 yards. Here you go. You get the four vertical. You give it to Clayton. A perfect strike again. The corner, Matt Clark, gets there just a bit late, and all of a sudden, the great athletes, if you, you know, how can this team rebuild the receiver so fast? Didn't they just lose their four all-time receivers just a year ago? And yet they think this bunch could be even <laughs> better now. Amazing. Great recruiting by the Stoop staff down here. The inside handoff to Ronaldo Works, and he is well cut off by the Bruins on that. Is Fagan, the four all-time receivers at Oklahoma, and they reload with guys just as good or maybe better. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Second down and 11 now, minute and a half of the opening quarter here. 7-3, Sooners lead the Bruins. They like to take Lance Donnelly in the Trent Smith spot right there, the tight end who can run. Got his first touchdown pass ever last week. Going deep now to the end zone, and incomplete. Dropped. Brandon Jones should have caught that ball. That's two drops for Brandon Jones. Can't throw it any better than that. Ball's there. Nice athletic play. Gets it right through his hands. Nobody hits him. I mean, he's close with a couple defenders, but that's a catchable ball. And one that Brandon Jones knows he could have got six on. In fairness to Brandon, he was skying pretty high to put his hands on that ball as he was going into the end zone. Fine athlete, minor league baseball player. I think it's in the. Uh, well, I don't remember his organization. Is now it's right here. He plays college. That's right on the other side. There's the interception. Picked off by Havner. Midfield down the sideline. Havner 20 to the six-yard line. The turnover. The recipe for an upset. First downs and get some turnovers and take advantage as the outside linebacker Havener runs 72 yards with the interception. It's going to be a read route, but the middle linebacker goes deep, and Havener right here confuses White. Watch the middle linebacker goes deep, takes away the deep one. They read it, curl. Quarterback and the linebacker don't see Havener, and Havener shows 
while he is a special player has played both weak side and strong side linebacker and gets one and shows he can run with it afterwards. Ronaldo works coming at an angle was able to bring him down and now can the Bruins take advantage in the red zone now and jumping in the middle and the linebacker claiming that he was uh, that he was pulled off actually that's uh, Dvorak number 94. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well I'll tell you first and goal from the six is tough but first and goal from the 12 is very very difficult especially against this defense. Forced error again, and the attention to detail that Carl Durrell is trying to sell to his football team to get over the hump and be consistent winners instead of middle of the pack guys is what the mistakes are still being made. Brent Venables, one of the co defensive coordinators, signaling in the play. And running back more for the end zone. Touchdown! Manuel White dives in. So White, the six foot three inch junior from Canyon Country, California, dives into the end zone and look what we've got here. UCLA leads Oklahoma. And for years, everybody thought UCLA was one of those finesse teams and now they're coming out, kicking out, power off tackle, get a block and you get a big running back and you go downhill and all of a sudden, Manny White has got 40 plus yards in this game. 42. Ran out of his shoe. <laughs> The loss of a shoe, a touchdown is scored for the Bruins. And the extra point added by Midlock. And UCLA, a three touchdown underdog, comes into Norman and takes a lead in the first quarter on Manuel White's diving touchdown. Back in the uh, UCLA cheerleaders are fired up in the gritty little Bruin down there with them. And Let's go get him, lads. One of the things that Carl Durrell has been trying to sell to his team is it's not just the great play, it's the play after the great play. How do you respond after you make a great play? That's what he wants to watch. That's the key to consistency. You make a great one, now what do you do the next play? Let's watch that UCLA defense. That's just a comparison of what the OU defense has done. And here UCLA is able to come in led by White with 42 rush yards already. So they got the big back ready last week. And he is carrying the load here as Rankins will take a knee in the end zone and it will come out. Now White has thrown only two interceptions so far this season. But again, I want to go back to talk about this UCLA defense. John Becker, a scout for the Indianapolis Colts, was upstairs and I had a conversation with him before the game and he said, I want to tell you one of the most impressive defenses that I've seen is being orchestrated right now by Larry Kerr and UCLA. He said these guys are going to keep them in the game today. I don't know what the offense could do, but this is a heck of a defense that we're looking at here. And he said they have patterned right after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A lot of heat. They jam the lanes and their ball hawks in that secondary. Now Jones will be the running back for the Sooners. There are the Bruins again, stopping the run, led by Havener, who certainly has been their MVP so far here in the early going, number 41. Not only that, but that front four, there's four seniors on this front four, Ball, Ball, Leslie, and Buschetti, and those guys are standing stout enough. They're not getting pushed off the ball and allowing those linebackers to clean it up, a la Tampa Bay's linebackers. When you're front four, stuff them up a bit, and you got a lot of options with those three guys behind. You want to give Warren Sapp any credit in there in the middle of that defensive line, huh? Well, Second down and eight now for White. You play fake, rolling hard to the left. It's the underneath man, and you can see Matt Ware, the big corner, number 17, come up now to take on J.D. Runnels, the fullback. So the first quarter winds on down here in Norman, and the crowd just a little bit stunned. We have a flag. Yeah, late. And it's a five number play. And there's our Big 12 crew. L.A. Sideline warn, warning on UCLA. <laughs> 
they had something to celebrate. Come on. They need a different color flag for that sideline water. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think I think my friend, my friend Steve just wanted a layer of time. Yep. Well, we've had two touchdowns scored here in the opening quarter. The first one by Oklahoma. Works battles in. But the second one put the Bruins in front. 10-7 the end of one. But UCLA uh, takes a somewhat stunning lead over Oklahoma at the end of one. But Gary, you want to experiment with a, a new set of yeah, graphics, lad. This is all on me if it doesn't work. Okay, you got here. that right. We're going to try to help you out a little bit. <laughs> a lot of different things happening during the game, whether they go to four wide receivers or five defensive backs. Look, we'll try to alert you with our formation alerts dropping down there from the, the box of the score and the time when any of the formations change dramatically. Dramatically, we will let you know. If uh, can I can I patent this or I, I don't know. If I can do it. Third down and four from the shotgun is White. First out of the pocket on the run, dies for the first down. Actually, he had crossed it before. We go picking up a couple more yards, but it's a first down on the Jason White scramble. And I'm sure that the coaches just hold their breath every time that Jason White takes off yeah. because of those two knee surgeries. Funny, he only weighs a base on one. You know, Spencer Havner that time took that play away just as White was ready to throw it. Havner was just baiting him in, and that was a good read by Jason not to throw another pick. Out of Nevada City, and he has played a heck of a football game here for the Bruins so far in the first half. As White changes up at the line of scrimmage. Still just four down linemen. Three, four, three. Here's Works. No running room there. Battles back for about a yard and a half. And you know, we asked Jason uh, how these injuries to both knees have changed his approach to the game. I used to, I'd go through you know, one or two reads and I'd take off running if nothing was there. Now, uh, the, you know, the running's the last thing I'm thinking about. And I'll go, I'll go through all my reads before I decide to you know, tuck it and run. The coaches maintain that he is the toughest single individual on their team. I believe they told us that uh, his we daddy always... had poured concrete uh, throughout his life. And, uh, his son, rugged and tough, just like Pops. We always are, those quarterbacks. <laughs> Second down and eight from the gun. And here comes Jones. Cuts back. It's the running lane. And Dave Ball is there for the stop. Well, let's see if the Ducks are missed extra point. Come back and win a football team. Michigan should be in a tie. They miss an extra point. Down 7-6. That figures to be a battle all day long. Here, the number one team of the nation trailing. They set the screen pass. And it is met by number 24, Ben Emanuel. The safety coming up. And I see that Tim Brandt's son is also on the field too for the Bruins. Number 32, he's another safety. He came out in an obvious pass situation. There you see him, the young man. Good to see that he's getting some playing time here. Of course, he grew up in Maryland. And, uh, that's where his daddy played, one of our announcers at, uh, at ABC. So nice, nice Kevin over to the sideline. Yeah, nice change of call by Chuck Long that time. UCLA dropping deep, coming in with different packages, goes to the screen. Now on first down, they set in the power eye. Fake now by White. Wants to go downfield and finally does launch and caught at the 12-yard line. There is Mark Clayton, number nine. 43 yards, White to Clayton. You can't cover it any better than this. UCLA is all over the play. The ball is underthrown. The free safety runs with the crossing route. The opposite corner comes over to take away the post. Both players are there, and one guy goes up and makes another play. Clayton makes the play. Matt Clark, who did not play last week, was right there, man-to-man -man coverage. Got to at least get that hand in front of that catch. Clayton having a big day. Four catches for 109 yards. So Mark Clayton, the difference for Oklahoma, making the circus catch down there for them. And you can see the average yards for the Sooners on first down. Now they're in that red zone. And White says, let's keep it in the air. Touchdown! A crossing pattern by number four, Travis Wilson. Another one of the super soft receivers. 12 yards. And just like that, Jason White passes the Sooners back 
into the lead. No pass rush again on Jason White. He looks, he looks, kind of takes his time. Three receivers to one side. You see Wilson go clear across the formation. No one in his face. You get one of those strange defenses where you're trying to play four zone across the board, and if you go high and low, you have no chance to stop it without a pass rush. Ray DiCarlo, the left-footed kicker. Matt McCoy is the holder, number 34. And there was a high fault that time, but uh, Ricardo still nails it. And it was this man, number four, Travis Wilson, with the touchdown pass from Jason White, who's now 8 of 12 for 144 yards. Timeout. In this uh, part of the country, you're born. And there's the scoring drive for Oklahoma. White perfect throwing the ball that time. And they move 80 yards quickly. And now DeCarlo with the ball on the tee. And there's Young Drew back deep for the Bruins. Off to the side this time and into the end zone. It'll come out of the 20. Now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary here, Gary. Well, both teams, quarterback, making plays on defense. See Hafner pick off a big play. That got UCLA rolling with White getting in there and getting a score against a solid defense. But Oklahoma comes right back. We get the big pass to Clayton and then the touchdown to Wilson. And uh, it looks like when you got a hot quarterback and you think you get big plays all over both quarterbacks today having their way. But the most important thing for UCLA, they're running the ball effectively. Jason White with the two biggest plays of the game. The interception and then of course the crossing touchdown pass. And uh, Craig Bragg, who's had some problems holding on the ball, I talked to him about it yesterday, and Craig told me that he didn't want to use it as an alibi, but he said that uh, Drew Olson throws a different kind of ball than Pouse did last year for the uh, for the Bruins, and he felt that he was not quite accustomed to it. He needed to catch it a few more times. He was blaming himself. Right. He, he wasn't trying to tell me it's not an excuse, but there was a difference as we discussed that. And uh, Drew Olson throws a little bit harder ball and a little bit flatter. And so here today, Bragg is making the catch. Flag here. Well, we sort that out this week's uh, half flag trivia question. Now, some of you fans jumped all over it right away, right? Even before we put it on the screen, what all pro NFL quarterback actually played for both Oklahoma and UCLA? That was uh, holding against uh, Oklahoma on that play, so uh, that'll be measured off against the defense. And uh, Gary, here in the early going, you have to be impressed with what the Bruins have been able to do so far. Well, I like their game plan. I, I, I think it was UCLA got the holding on them, and I, I'm not sure Yeah, they are going to march it back. But you have to be impressed with what Carl Durrell is telling his team. He's saying, I don't need to trick Oklahoma to win. We're going to run our basic offense. We're going to try to be physical with these guys. And I'm giving a message to you guys that I believe in. I think that's what's been more than anything. We don't come in with a bunch of tricks and reverses to say, I can't beat you. Let's just play football. Well, he's developing a big, sturdy running back. And uh, standing in the pockets, Olsen almost intercepted. If there is a doubt about Olsen, it's his accuracy. And Rodney Poole makes the play defensively, number 23. Brent, that's a very dangerous pass to throw. Here on the right hash, and you're trying to throw a seam pass down the left side of the, of the field. You've got a safety right on the hash mark, and that ball is in the air for about three and a half seconds. That's just way too long. Look, right hash all the way to the left pass, and that safety just could have ate that ball up. Actually, if it was a better throw, it would have been intercepted. Third down and 14. Olsen will have to put it up in uh, timeout called by the Bruins. So we'll take a break with Oklahoma leading UCLA. 14-10. Oklahoma, the entrance of the library. And you can see that dandy clock from just about any place on campus. It's uh, Tommy Harris, the big, big defensive lineman, number 97. He's got a Sunday in his future, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Those guys are invaluable in the NFL. 14-10, third down and 14 for Olsen now. They bring the blitz, and they run against it. Trying to get back a little field position with White. 
You know, here's today's singular wireless poll. Which school should be ranked number one this week? And log on to ESPN.com, keyword singular, make your vote. Or singular users, text message to 222. We'll update you with the poll results in the second half. Miami, Michigan, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and USA may be very disappointed if Sooner fans aren't working at home. Right? Fourth down and seven. And Cluey back to punt again here. Antonio Perkins back deep. Perkins at the 26. Dances for a hole. Got it. 40. 45. Midfield now. He's got blockers all the way. And Perkins explodes for the Sooner touchdown. 74 yards on the return. We told you he was a piece of dynamite just waiting to be lit. Well, they lose Andre Walfolk, and when you talk to Bobby Stoops, he said this guy may be, in the long run, a better corner. Look at this. UCLA has it covered well, but the spin move gets outside of all the pursuit, and then there's nobody left. Nobody on UCLA's back. The fullbacks, the punter, they can't run that well, and straight walks into the end zone. Excuse me. Perkins walks into the end zone. Now to Carlo. So the Sooners hmm. put up three touchdowns, running, passing, and special teams. And they lead it 21 to 10. Take one more look. What a spin here. Got to beat the gunner, which he does. Now darts for daylight. Picks up beautiful interference as he heads for the left side. And now he's in zone bound here in Norman. Bazell Memorial Library here in Norman, Oklahoma, on this uh, this beautiful campus. UCLA and Oklahoma with Gary Danielson and Jack Root. I'm Brett Musburger. 81,207 at least on hand today. They have just seen Perkins with his fourth career punt return for a touchdown. Folks back in the 40s, Jack Mitchell. And he's a legend in college football. Seven returns for touchdowns, but Perkins is closing in. Out of the end zone, coming out of the 20. Now, earlier we asked you the athletic trivia question. Which NFL quarterback played for both these schools? Well, let's take a look, folks. In an Oklahoma uniform, Troy Aikman running the option and taking off. Barry Switzer, the coach. He transferred. Terry Donahue, now the drop back passer for a touchdown. And next stop for Troy Aikman, the NFL Hall of Fame. As Troy Aikman plays for both Oklahoma and UCLA. I think he made a mistake. If he stayed at Oklahoma, he could have been a congressman, couldn't he? If he just stay, stay here, <laughs> Hall of Famer. Only a couple of oil That's right. Tyler Ebell in as the running back. Gets the carry and number eight, Dante Nicholson. Strong safety. You know, they had a legend back at that safety spot for a few years here. Roy Williams, he's now down with the Dallas Cowboys. And they're hoping that Nicholson, along with Everidge, can give them the same kind of play there. He reminds you of what's ahead for, for next Saturday. Pittsburgh, Texas A&M, the Aggies. And Oklahoma taking charge here with a passing touchdown and then a punt return touchdown. They're up 21-10 on the Bruins. And Drew Olson searching now for some answers with the passing game. He's thrown for only 33 yards. White in as the running back. Before he can get to the line of scrimmage, and that's number 15, Chambers, standing tall. And uh, Drew Olson's an interesting story, Jack. Well, Brent, yeah, he lost the quarterback battle in preseason to Matt Moore. Matt Moore goes down to injury, and Drew admits that during preseason, he looked at the new playbook. He said, well, I'll get to it later. He said, I totally lost focus. I didn't pay attention. He has now rededicated himself because he's at the helm of the UCLA Bruins. He said, now I'm a lot more focused. He'd better be, Brent. Exactly. Not averaging four yards a pass yet. We've got to improve on that. 8.54. In trouble. Sucked by number eight, Nicholson. Comes off the strong safety position. 
for the sack. That's one of the things when you talk to Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator, he says they don't want to get us in third and long. As we put our nickel package in, we come from every angle. This time it's coming this way. Zone blitz behind it. They drop a defensive end, and UCLA is not far enough along in their offense in this West Coast to handle that blitz package. They have to keep it third and medium. Chambers did a great job of helping him on that play. That was a beautiful blitz. Well, here comes Perkins. Can he do it back to back? Cooley said, let's get him over there, that hash. Picks up an early block, dancing again, and not this time. He'll go down at the 44-yard uh, line, and Brandon Schiller is tough on the special team, making the stop. Oklahoma with the lead in the football as we take a break on a beautiful day in Norman. We welcome you back to the uh, BCS Spotlight game. Presented by ADT, Oklahoma ranks number one in both of the major polls. So if the BCS rankings were to come out right now, the question about the Sooners would be a number one. They had a tough road trip into Alabama. Hard-fought game against the Crimson Tide, beat them again. You can see the linebacker well off the line now on first and ten. White's back in that shotgun. Fakes to Jones, they're going to throw on the first down. And there is Jones again, number 81, going to the ground in effort. He's had some problems over here today. But that's, I believe, Gary, his second drop of the day. He's caught only one pass for seven yards. I actually think it's his third. He dropped a little a hitch pass. I forgot about that. You're right. The post route. This one was a little bit behind him. Uh, we'll try to be fair to him again. I mean, bootleg play, it's wide open. Uh, Jason kind of lays it into the hole right there. Very, very catch. He goes down to his knees and just drops it. That's as simple as you can get. I guess when you got this type of lead, 21-10, you might as well have your worst game of the year. Yeah, yep. Second down and 10. There's the inside handoff to Jones and the Bruins stuff it. Chiller helps on that tackle. So Brandon Chiller, number 11, making another stop from that inside linebacking position. And uh, UCLA, if they can get a stop, yep. get something going offensively. I think the big issue now with UCLA is the uh, the passing game. Well, it also looks that o like Oklahoma's adjusted with their strategy as they go into this thing. They're saying, we know you're going to try to run the ball early, and we're going to try to stop that run and force long distance. Third down 11 for Jason White. Defensive package steps up beautifully, goes sideline and incomplete to Rankins. Well, the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund and an awful lot of first half candidates for, for Oklahoma. It'll sort itself out here as the uh, as the game unfolds. A lot of major, major contests. Uh, kind of, kind of Georgia, a dead playing uh, LSU uh, a bit later, I believe, today. That's a, that's a big game. Tennessee beating up on Florida, the SEC. And so Oklahoma punting for the first time today. Let's see what Blake Ferguson got. They've had so much trouble. That one he gets off of a two-step punt. A change in style for the end zone. And it'll come out on the 20-yard line. A very, very knowledgeable crowd. Knew they have been having problems with the punt game. And... Uh, they have changed. Uh, a week ago, they were three-step. Now they go to a two-step. You see the three-step that was last week. They were going about 2.1. Now they're at about 1.95. See the ball's punted there, not in the other one. That little bit is what uh, the coach all week said we got to improve upon. Plus, they made a few personnel decisions. Can't win the national championship to get punts back. Question about that. First down for the Bruins coming out for the 20 yard line. Run the draw play with White. So he has been the workhorse here for the uh, Bruins today. They have 78 yards of offense and he has 54 yards. He's about, he, not only the workhorse, he's been the only horse in the running game. They didn't get anything from anyone else and I think. You see Oklahoma and Stoops starting to zero in on what Oklahoma's game, excuse me, UCLA's game plan is, and now starting to stop it. And the linebacker up on the tight end side of the formation. 
Olsen going back, and you can see that ball, the end was up as it went out of bounds that time. And so there's a lot of chance to complete that. Well, most people say this is the fastest, most talented defense in the country. Teddy Lehman is one of the reasons. Tommy Harris up front. They've the got depth, line. they've got speed, and they've got experience. They keep adding new guys like Nicholson to this package where they don't even miss a beat. Bobby Stoops, and there's Mike right there, says this could be our best defense at Oklahoma. That's quite a mouthful. Mike being happy with the situation right now. There's a fifth defensive back on the field here for this third and four for UCLA. Short drop by Olsen to heel flare for the first down. Got it as he puts the ball in the hands of Manuel White. Come with me out to Fontana, California tomorrow. Sorry, partner, but I've got an appointment in the golf course <laughs> of Montana. All right, here's the handoff now. And uh, White carried for him. So uh, Tommy Harris had a chance to talk to him. Gary did the other day and ask him for his description of the Oklahoma defense. I would say, wow. <laughs> and that pretty much sums it up. It is a wow indeed. And he's a wow indeed, isn't he? I mean, he's one, one of the best players in college football. Didn't get great stats a year ago, but he's healthy, as Brent told you. And uh, he's a difference maker up front. Plays the wide tackle right there, and he's in the backfield most of the time. Second and eight. Short of the... Uh, First down marker on the uh, completion, and they put it in Frank Frank's hands again. Jack? Brent, how tough do you think Tommy Harris really is? Tough enough, partner. Well, let's go back to high school where his father was an ex-boxer, decided he was going to teach the pugilistic art to his son. He took him to a local gym and made him fight not people that were his age, but ex-GIs that had been in golden gloves and GI boxing. That's tough. Indeed. He survived, and here he is, a junior. But uh, there'll be a lot of speculation as a defense led by Teddy Lehman that time, one of the fastest linebackers in the country. Number 11, a former tuck man out of high school. That young man, when they run 40s, he challenges wide receivers and running backs. Yeah. He's 4'4 and chain. Also, Chambers that time, 15 and 11, just meet and head on both linebackers. You know, Lance Mitchell's a great player, but they have a lot of great players around here. 15 on one shoulder, 11 on the other shoulder, and they just clean it up. Short yardage play, and uh, the Oklahoma defense is four real. And here's Cluey again, which means that Perkins awaits this punt. Runs up to the 16-yard line. Got a hole. Explodes. Going end zone. Touchdown. His second return, but there is a penalty flag at the 21-yard line, so hold on here a second. Let's let them sort it out now. I think it's going to be celebration. I think Oklahoma had an extra guy in the field celebrating as he was running into the end zone. He had the last 50 yards by himself, Brent. Nobody was even on the, that side of the field from UCLA. We have sideline warning on Oklahoma. It counts, 84 yards, and Perkins now has returned two punts for touchdowns. Take another look. A He's a dancer in the middle of the field. Yeah, dodge, a dodge, one more dodge, and the last 50 yards is like he's running out for uh, practice. He's got two guys with him, and it's a trot into the end zone, and uh, boy, that, we, remember we said rattle him as one of the things that UCLA had to do? We know who's rattled now. That is four touchdowns. The Sooners have put up. What happened was UCLA just made them angry. When they wouldn't care. I think and, so. And the Sooners said, wait a minute. This is not supposed to happen to us. And uh, suddenly, guess who's up by 18 as Picardo whacks it in? It's 28 10. Take a look at it. He has been electrifying here today in the Norman, Oklahoma sunshine. Oftentimes, when you're on a, a punt coverage team and you know you got a great guy, you say, I got to get down there as fast as I can. And when you beat that first wave like you th Perkins did, there's just no one back there to stop. Catch
catch it, kind of jigger butt right, go a little bit left, beat the first wave with a cutback, and basically from the 50-yard line on, there's no one from UCLA on the field. He could have ran backwards all the way. Of course, that would have caused a penalty, but he trotted in from the 50. First time in school history that anyone has ever returned two punts for touchdowns in one game. Perkins, 185 yards with punt return. Why, the young man has run almost back to his hometown of Lawton, Oklahoma. That's how far he's gone today. Give me a little oxygen, he said. Man, I got I to gotta have some of that because I could be busy here today. Well, he's got to go right back out on defense unless they put the other corner in. We, we got to start looking at the NCAA record now. We got we to gotta ask George Hill over here to get a hold of them stats guys and find out what the record is for a single game because we may be sitting in on a little football history back here and this young man says give me something I can return. Well it is, it's a good odds that UCLA will have to punt again in this game too. There's one returnable. Picked up. Michigan update from John Saunders. Coach Bellotti is one of the best coaches in the country, and Eugene is a dangerous spot to go after you whip up an arch rival like Notre Dame. So it is now uphill in that one for the Wolverines. Here it is uphill for UCLA. Olsen trying to get somebody open, throws it high, wide, and incomplete. Some great views as you look down here on the packed house in Norman, Oklahoma. The Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion, traveled all the way down from Ann Arbor for us. And uh, Captain Mitch Johnson is at the controls of the Bloomin' Onion, high above Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. I always like to take a blimp all the way down to Oklahoma from Michigan. There he is, huh? He's up there. You get to stop and eat at every Outback Steakhouse, it's not that far, is it? That's what I <laughs> now figures to put it up second down and ten and back, to keep the defense honest and, uh, making the stop for this tough OU defense Jack well, Brent you were talking about maybe UCLA shouldn't have scored on this defense when you talk to them and especially Teddy Lehman he says they have a go for broke mentality. The Sooners defense knows every once in a while they're going to get burned. They say, we don't worry about that. What we worry about is the reaction after the fact. I think they're doing a pretty good job after the fact. Third down and eight. And Perkins must be licking his chops. If he's got enough oxygen, because he's about to get another shot at it. That's Craig Gregg. Well, it's a very interesting style that Oklahoma has. They're very aggressive in gambling up front, but they're very sound in the secondary. Their safeties play deep, and they try to keep everything in front of them. They depend on their big plays from their front four and their punt returns. They were going to take Perkins out, and he put himself back in the game. Mark Clayton had gone out to give him a blow, and Perkins says, get off, get off, get off. I want to go. I got something going. They got to angle punt this. They cannot punt it to him. Right to him. Here he comes. At the 14-yard line, beats the first gunner, looks middle. Here he comes. The penalty flag comes flying as Perkins makes the 45-yard line, which is a pretty good return unto itself. But we've got to hang on here for this penalty flag. <laughs> so this uh, Big 12 crew will sort things out here. <laughs> I think you got to figure out a different way <laughs> than to punt that ball straight I, down the field, don't you? Who's coaching the special teams for UCLA? Is that Bo Schimbeck? <laughs> <laughs> to rock it, is is that right? <laughs> Come on, Bo, pull it away from him. Look at him. Man, he's exhausted over there, folks. I, I it, mean, he's, he's done a, a season's worth of work returning punts here. Antonio today. says, you know what, can we just give up a couple first downs so I can get my breath back? <laughs> he's not going to get full credit this time, though. I think he hauled that back up. Another 40 yarder, wasn't it, George? But it's coming back a little bit. So, <laughs> going to be a little bit of a costly penalty here against the, uh, against the Sooners. So I guess I can remind everybody that, uh, man, some big stories. Kansas State upset by Marshall today. Michigan, uh, after that glossy victory over the Irish, in trouble. And uh, coming up now, John Sanders, and 
Well, Terry Dunn and Craig James, they'll have all the uh, all the insights into what's going on. Great, great Saturday. Tennessee moving up. Play fake now from Jason. In trouble. Throws it away and out of bounds. Incomplete on the play as he was moving up. There's the penalty flag now. A late call. The linesman over there and uh, well, they call no it. receiver over there. Is it the grounding going to be called on White? It was a very late flag. Did he pick it up? Let's see what happens. Here. That's what it is. Yep. Boy, that was late. You know, uh, uh, Dave Ball was on him as he threw that ball, and, and usually you're trying to avoid a sack like that. The referee will be very diligent in how he calls it. You know, I thought that time that uh, Steve uh, used to check the referee got a signal from the linesman late, and yeah. that's why he threw it. You see number 49, Matt Ball, is on the play right there. The ball is thrown. It doesn't cross the line of scrimmage right there. He was avoiding yeah, a sack, and that is a good play. Yeah, by rule, that's intentional grounding. It yep. did not cross the line of scrimmage, and that's why the linesman signaled to the referee that it was behind the scrimmage line. So that's a very good call by those guys. Down there. And that's good officiating, Right, too. even though he was outside of the tackle box, it still has to cross the line. Second down to 21 now. Jones is uh, stuffed by Muschetti. That's Ryan Muschetti out of San Mateo. Yeah, I guess the only thing that, you, as you watch Oklahoma, you see all their great athletes, you see their great defense, and you look and you say, where could they possibly, what could possibly go wrong for this football team? One is, they don't run the ball as well as they did last year with Quinton Griffin. They had 38 yards rushing in this first half. And secondly, Jason White, I mean, he's gone down twice. He's got a hot quarterback. The team is built around the passing game. If he went down, it could be a problem. Tackle for setting up the pass block again. Here they come. In the pocket. That screen out to the left-hand side. And has been a very busy receiver here today. That's five catches for him. Havener, who had the biggest play of the day for UCLA, making another stop. He had that interception and the big return that set up the Bruins touchdown. Minute and a half, showing here at the half. Timeout has been called in this game by the Bruins now. Each with a timeout left, and we'll take a break for going. Back here in Norman, Oklahoma, it's time for the collegiate tale of the tape. Our subject, the university. Oklahoma University is comprised of 21,444 undergraduates. 11 undergraduate colleges, 19 graduate degrees available. Brent, they are first in the Big 12 in Native American language classes, but I know you visited the Weizenhofer collection because you're so into French Impressionist paintings. Oh, I love Monet. Would never miss him. <laughs> is he favored or, or, or not in, in, in the painting business? Absolutely. He's is he an underdog or favorite? Big favorite. Big favorite. <laughs> Cost you millions, millions to get one for your living room. Well, here's here's a little problem. Let's see how they get this thing off. Two-step last time worked. So Blake goes uh, back to fun again. Great drag. Bruins wide receiver. Except to return this. There's a man leaking through, but he got it off and Bragg fumbles and wraps it up. Bruins football right there. It's uh, the time ticking away here in the first half. And, yeah. uh, we'll see if Bruins is able to get it down the field as we approach halftime and the number one team in the nation fell behind early but has taken charge here with two big punt returns for touchdowns by number 28 Antonio Perkins the junior the spin move the dash to the middle and let's cut left and let's simply outrun everybody the second one again in the middle a dance step but this time to the right pick up some help and go to the end zone and now Olsen in trouble they lose it but he cannot get away from number 92 Larry Verdine and the crowd wants intentional grounding called over here. But again, that pass may have gone across the scrimmage line. And he was right on the scrimmage line when he let it go. It was very close. UCLA cannot afford now to run the ball. They've got to get points on the scoreboard. Olsen sacked five times a week ago. Nothing visual. There. Well, here we go again. He was right on the line of scrimmage when he threw that. That's what I think. Yes. Was beyond the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. It was right, just right on it. I think there should be a, a, a 
exception. When you got a guy 300 pounds chasing you and you're right on the line like that. Whoops, what? What you say? <laughs> you can cross it and then throw yeah, it? Yeah, if you got a big guy chasing the you like that. Gary Danielson <laughs> asterisk. Survival rule. Yeah, right. Okay. 28-10. 19 on second and 14. Forced over to the right, watches receiver to cut deeper. Fires long and incomplete. He's overthrown a number of receivers, but again, a fair to him. Double coverage on the deep man as Bassey and Every had deep coverage there, and there is a dandy safety, number seven, Brandon Every. Because of his work back there at free safety, that allows Dante Nicholson to press the line of scrimmage. He knows he's got a great center fielder behind him. And they're able to blitz Nicholson, do a lot of different things. Average, uh, who actually played in the national championship game, made tackle in that football game, has grown and grown in this game. And Average has become a real, real impact player on defense. Three of nine. Nickel in now for the Sooners. Four rushed in. from Mercedes Lewis. The six inch tight end and Brandon Everidge was back there again, number seven. And Drew Olson didn't have much of a shot that time because he got some pressure from Jonathan Jackson, number 49, and number 80, Dan Cody, coming around the side. Cody, who they say have turned it to another level. Watch him come to the outside, beats the tackle, puts the pressure on, you get those two defensive ends. No room to even feel good when you're a quarterback in those type of throws. Fourth and 14. to Perkins. Here's that matchup again. It has resulted in 214 yards of punt returns and this time no way. <laughs> Out of bounds and the crowd doesn't like it. No. the most exciting play of the day and they say that shouldn't be fair. Right. They paid good money to watch these punt returns here today, right? Yeah. You know, that's the one rule of football I change. Well, NFL that, that, and college. That, that would be nice. I it's mean, the only play yes. where you're allowed to kick the ball or throw the ball or run the ball out of bounds. I agree. They should tack on five yards Absolutely. on it. Like Make that. a punt it to him. That's the only one? Yep. <laughs> How about that one where you can throw the ball away? <laughs> so the one I could think of at the moment. I, you got to wonder if you're, you know, we just saw a week ago Notre Dame, a, a proud team get embarrassed. Now you got UCLA, a proud defense coming to this football game. When you got guys trotting after punt returns to score, you got to wonder what the psyche of this UCLA team is right now. Jason White in that shotgun. And he's complete to Watkins. It's out of bounds on that far sideline. Inside of a uh, minute, number and it, uh, it almost looks like the way they're running their offense that they would love to give to Carlo a shot at a long one. I think you're right. I think they all, it's almost like a practice session now. Chuck Long is going to say, okay, let's pretend now that we need these three points to win a football game. Don't make any mistakes. Let's work it down the field and uh, give another shot. Fly comes flying. That's probably holding against the Sooners as he uh, breaks up the middle. He's taken down by Rodney Presley, and there's flags on the play. You know, the one thing that uh, Stoops should be trying to avoid here is another punt, although they've been much more efficient out of here today. The holding call will be assessed against the uh, number one team in the nation with 47 holding. seconds left to play. On the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Well, and on the other side, it might be good practice to do it again. You know, you're going to have to punt the rest of the year. And uh, I think now with 47 seconds, UCLA has a couple timeouts left. So you'll see what their style is. Do they run it and try to take clock off or do they continue to attack? Done. They set the screen. He put it in Ronaldo Works' hands and he kind of collides with Vince Carter. So the clock ticking now. Nice play by Ray Buschetti right there, number 75. He got blocked down, got up, and made the play. That's the strength of this defense, that front four. But, you know, with Oklahoma's great skilled athletes and the special teams. It's really not been a factor in a football game, and Larry Kirk can't take advantage of it. They've got to let the time run out. They're going to let her go. So Bob Stoops in uh, Oklahoma take a lead. 
They thrive on special teams again. Bob Stoops has been a master at special teams play here since he took over, and we check in with Jack. Teams have been outstanding. Yeah, Jack, uh, Antonio Burke is just a special player. He's made some incredible plays, really. We're blocking for him, but he made some unbelievable plays on his own, really. Where do you want to see any sort of improvement in the second half, Coach? Well, you know, everywhere. We started off a little slow defensively, but we've really picked it up here in the last, uh, you know, three-fourths of the second uh, first half. And offensively, we've been off just a little bit. We're close to getting a little more running game, and we had a few drop passes that hurt us, too. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Antonio Perkins, he's the man of the match so far, halfway home, and the Sooners are dominating. Terry Bowden and Craig James, and again, you, you look at this Oklahoma team and you say, all right, we know they're great defensively. How good are they offensively right now looking very good against UCLA? Well, it's their special teams. They're great teams, yeah. find a way to win. They've got great athletes. They put on special teams, two punt returns for touchdowns. They find a way to make it happen because they started out sluggish. And we all talked about Oklahoma having no quarterback. Yeah. You know, Jason Weiss yeah. not healthy. Hey, that rascal can throw the yeah. football, yeah. you know, and he's accurate. And Mark Clayton's a good receiver. They've got players on offense to match that defense. Yeah, Bob Stoop is smiling right now. He thinks all the way to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. It's 28-10 Oklahoma at the half, but what's really out of whack is this stat. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. One half, five returns, 214 Is that a yards. record? <laughs> it's gotta be a record. He's approaching Golden Richards' record. Man, oh man, well, Gary. It's hard to, you know, for UCLA to compete with, UC, with Oklahoma in just regular play, but to give them special teams, come on, you don't have a chance. 14-10 game if they don't get those two returns. That's what I think UCLA is lamenting at halftime. All right, we'll be back now with the uh, second half as we take a look at Perkins' first return. The head to the left. Now square the shoulders and dash for the end zone. And we'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Antonio Perkins, his show continues. He gets ready to return the second half kickoff. Already 214 punt return yards. The record, 219 set by Golden Richards. BYU against North Texas. That was back in 1971. So obviously this will not count as part of that record. And UCLA made absolutely sure they take it out of the end zone. We check in now on the Pacific Life game summary statistics from the first half. Now, circle that rushing yards over there for Oklahoma, Gary, because yeah, I just that, think that your point is really solid about that, that's this. The, that's the one thing you worry about with this team. If you go a long season, as good as they play on defense, you're going to find one of those games, right, when they have to run the ball to win it, and uh, we will see if they can. You know, it's one of these things where the stats don't mean a lot because of all the return yard stats. These stats are a bit distorted. Jason White brings the offense out. They have really favored the shotgun against this UCLA defense. Of course, so they like to just line him up, but they don't want him to be doing that. Man, alive. And uh, uh, Jack, what did uh, Coach Durrell have to say? Well, Brent, no surprise. He preached to his team during halftime about the big plays and what happened and what it cost him. But when I asked Coach what he was going to do vis-a-vis -vis punts from now on, he says, Jack, I think we're going to revert back to what we used to do. He called it directional punting. I like to call it keep it away from Perkins. <laughs> exactly. Second down at 11, Wilson brings the play in from the uh, Sooner sideline now against this UCLA defense. Clayton's been busy, goes in motion through the formation. Looks back to the right side. And he's short of the first down, and that is Jawan Rankins. Rankins, another one of those sophomores you're talking about. Playmakers coming around. You know, when you throw the ball like Oklahoma has done now for the last four years under Bobby Stoops, you attract guys who want to catch the ball. That's what makes it a little easier to recruit those type of players. So the J.D. Runnels fullback package checks in, and that means that Kiwan Jones is on the field as Jason White's running back here. White has thrown for 173 yards. His only misstep 
That bad interception would set up UCLA's go-ahead touchdown briefly back in the first quarter. Play fake now to Jones. Gets a block. Short of the first down as the Bruins collapse with Matt Ball, number 49. One of the twins leading. leading the way. How about having twins anchor a defensive line, Gary? That's really yeah. something. Well, uh, Matt Ball was a, a linebacker last year, number 49. Dave Ball had 11 sacks for the for UCLA, and he's really their playmaker, but uh, well, that's, a, that's a, lot of, a lot of mouths to feed at home, I bet you, when they come home. Let's see now. Oklahoma has kept well, it clean here. Interesting call on third short, wasn't it, Frank? Yeah, it was. A pass right there. I thought they'd see if they could run. They just haven't committed to no. that. Uh, it seems like they feel they have to throw against this defense. You see how they fill those gaps very well. I believe there's a flag down on this play. And the flag is swallowed. Dennison. And the backup linebacker is number 36 all over him with that tackle. But there Formation on a kicking team. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Penalties declined. First down. All right now, Coach Durrell was with the Shanahan staff in Denver, and I asked him about the rivalry, the Raiders and the Broncos. There's no doubt the, the Broncos will be ready to play, and uh, that's a game they look forward to, and I know um, it'll be an exciting time. Yeah, both teams look forward to that, and... Uh, Terrell, of course, outstanding coach of the wide receivers for the Broncos. Here's the handoff to Manuel White, and the ball comes free. Scooped up by the big fella. And rumble, rumble, rumble. Here comes the heavyweight champion, Tommy Harris. To <laughs> the 29 yard line. All right, Tommy. Well, I'd like to see that smile while he's running right there. Big hit from the secondary, just popped that ball loose. Was it, who was it, coming downhill? Was it the safety? Was it average? Was it outside? Was it Bassey? It was, I think Eric Bassey, number 13, popped it loose, and then when you hustle, good things happen. And the big guy, I would like to pull him down. <laughs> you finally get him out of bounds. Let's meet the big fella. My name is Tommy Harris, and my nickname is TJ. My favorite TV show is Family Matters because Urkel, he's a crazy guy. My favorite athlete is Leroy Glover because he's a guy that gets after it and he wears 97. My favorite food is my mother's lasagna because it is the best. <laughs> Can't beat mama's lasagna. And, uh, after that uh, return of the fumble, uh, Tommy Jones is the running back for the Sooners, and they seem to be in... Good shape again. Not quite inside the uh, red zone. The 25 yard line with a second down. As you watch the replay that Gary was narrating, you had to be impressed by the way Tommy Harris went airborne in pursuit. The one thing that he has shown us in an open field is he can chase down a play. And it is amazing to watch him move. He's explosive. Jones just short of that uh, yellow first down marker. Gary. Really interesting. A couple years ago, uh, Bobby Stoops said, we need to run the ball better. Can you watch this team run the ball? Let's watch go back 97 to now. Yep. Watch 97. 97. Ball pops loose. There it is. If you hustle, good things happen. He's got it in the wrong hand, switches it to the right hand. That's perfect. Glances behind to make sure no one's coming, switches it again, then switches it back again. This guy's played a lot of Sandlot bad <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's your third down now. Remember, Harris was in earlier in the game as a tight end and blocked in a key play on their first scoring drive. Let's not forget what Tommy Harris did on that play. White end zone, caught, touchdown, Oklahoma! On a beautiful grab by Lance Donnelly, the six-foot, four-inch tight end, a 22-yard reception, and it was a beauty. A week ago against Fresno State, Donnelly, his first touchdown here at Oklahoma, and folks, that was number two. Well, Chuck Long is the offensive coordinator right here, and I think he said, I think UCLA is going to try to stuff this play. Let's see if they can stop the short play action pass. Perfect throw, and Chuck Long, offensive coordinator, old time quarterback from Iowa, Detroit Lions in the NFL calls down and says, nice touch, Jason. DiCarlo adding that there's a great trivia question about Chuck Long. One of the few, if not the only, quarterback to ever play in five bowl games while he was at Iowa after injury was granted an extra year. He played a couple of Rose Bowls. Now watch Donald, folks. Breaks the daylight. Just pulls it in over the shoulder for 
for the score. Defense got there late, didn't they? We got a timeout. DeCarlo putting the ball on the tee here for Oklahoma. Reese through the freshman. Back deep. Good call, Gary. You were all over that as he had to run backwards. Goes out of bounds as a result of it. And what a mistake that is. He lines up too shallow instead of going forward for the ball. DiCarlo's been kicking a deep ball game. A young player making a mistake and costing the team. Been there the whole time. He's on the eight-yard line. Watch. He has to retreat. Catches it the wrong way. It's like a center fielder playing too shallow with the number four hitter up. Boom, he catches it, goes out of bounds, perfect call. Man, that's about as bad as it can get, isn't it? A lot of mistakes by this UCLA yeah, team after they took that lead 10-7. Yellow Hanky is down. On a kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Re-kick. Kick it now. See, we see those flags up here, but we're so confused that it might be every all the players near the near the field. We don't want to say anything. Gary, let's take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook. You got it. De defense is what Oklahoma does well, and when they get in nickel situations, they're the best at it. There's the nickel package, third and long. That allows the defensive back who's lined up over the slot to come in. You got a big end or tackle on him, a little too agile, gets into Drew Olson's face and makes the sack. You don't want to play Oklahoma third and long. They had too many different packages. He's still lined up, Gary, on the nine-yard line, well, so he's not expecting uh, well, the kicker's the back. Carlo to uh, whack it, but of course they backed him up right. on the penalty, right. so this time you can move up a few yards, I guess. <laughs> right. And it's fielded it this time appropriately on the nine yard line. And uh, he scrambles back to the 23. That was Other of the young linebacker. I mean, there's no way to talent. When you go to practice, yep. this is one of the most efficiently run practices at Oklahoma you'll ever be around. The Bob Stoops staff is not the best. He's certainly one of the best overall coaching staffs in the country. Well, the job that he did coming over here from Florida, he was Steve Spurrier's defensive coordinator, his brother on the right, Brent Venables, the co-defensive coordinators. Upstairs, Chuck Long, Kevin Wilson's down on the sideline. He has his work cut out. Kevin does because he's got to improve the blocking of this offensive line to come with a running game. They're going to need it before the season's over. Wilson throwing underneath and a uh, nice stretch there by Craig Bragg. Orton in the AFC, somebody's got to shut down the Bills because they look tough. And if they can go in there and beat Miami, they'll run for a division title, make no mistake. They still might. But this is a big game in the AFC Sunday night. Behind the right side of his line, Wayne Chambers. You know, uh, Gary, uh, Wayne Chambers, number 15, he's been very active and very effective filling in for Mitchell today. He's going to get high marks from the coaches, I think. Talk to Brent Venables about him, who coaches him, the linebacker, says he's very instinctive. Doesn't have as much experience as Lance Mitchell, of course, who was an all Big 12 first team linebacker. But, uh, you know, I was watching the linebackers warm up before the game, Brent. I didn't see much difference between number one, the first linebacker, and the tenth linebacker. They all look good to me. The three starters are pass caught. Oh, man, did Everidge come over on that play and Bryant able to hold on. Congratulated by the coaches over there at UCLA. I mean, he unloaded on him. Yeah. There is that man, number seven. He is a great safety, but good for Brad. He knows he's going to get hit with this ball. He catches it and takes the hit. Good shoulder pop from Everidge. But Bragg, who's been drop him and dropping a lot of them, has shown his teammates that he's willing to catch the tough one. He's made a half dozen catches today for 48 yards. So Bragg hanging on to the football, making plays. First down and 10 here with the Bruins trailing by 25. completed pass out to the left side this time for a first down again and Ryan Smith the senior from Flower Mound Texas with the first down well, Brandon Everidge the senior safety for Oklahoma has a lot of skills and one of the best things he does anything he sees he tracks it down 
It's like laser vision. Whatever he sees, he hits. You know what else? The guy's got great hands. Anything near him, he's going to catch, or anything he touches, he tackles. And you don't play defense for Oklahoma if you don't have quick feet. Come on, quick feet, quick feet, quick feet. The Ebel <laughs> in as the running back. Nicholson tightens up in that safety spot. Came right over to that side. Lehman, number 11, jumping over the top of the pile. And a penalty flag now. I think, I think it was a good move by the Oklahoma coaches with the injury to Lance Mitchell not to take the, the bait and move Teddy Lehman back inside to a middle linebacker position where he played before. You know, you talk to Brent Venables and Mike Stoops, he says, why change two positions when we only need to change one? But it is in their saddlebag. Absolutely. If they ever have to go back to it, because there's a young linebacker by the name of Lewis Baker, number 16. He's just a youngster in this Oklahoma program. He came in very ballyhooed, and they could put Baker at the real linebacker and move Lehman to the mic if they have to down the road. But right now, Chambers doing the job, and Ebel breaks for daylight on him. So there's one of his better runs, best of the day, and Everidge, the center fielder, makes the stop. And uh, Jack, they're just waiting for Tyler Ebel to explode here, young man. Well, Brent, let's remember that Tyler Ebel set some national prep running records at Ventura High School. Listen to this. He rushed for 4,495 yards, just like you're watching right now. And this is one of the 64 touchdowns that he scored his senior season. Oh, here's a second one. This kid reminds me a lot of, of uh, Mr. Knight, Derek Knight from Boston College. Yeah, he, he's small side. He needs to bulk up a little bit. He's only 5'9", but uh, kind of hides behind his offensive blockers as they play fake to him. And Olsen takes a deep drop. Now he'll run out of trouble. Going for that first down. Reaches for it. Got it. So Drew Olson with a nice scramble that time, Gary. Drew Olson, yes. he, he's, he's kept them, his, his wits about him. I'd say that about him. He's got a, nothing has worked well all game for him, but he hasn't panicked. He hasn't overreacted to the pass rush. He hasn't forced too many balls in there. Not a lot of bad plays from him. Just looks like overall a conservative pass game. As you look at, see how Oklahoma stays deep. They make everything happen in front of him. That's why Drew Olson was forced to run for the first down. He does a nice job on it. Way to change out of cross now. He was very close. I thought from the first look that he had gone across, but he has not. Looks like. Let's see what they Take a second look at it. Looks like just a uh, fingernail, huh? Thumbnail? Well, it's a good thing he didn't have to get his reading glasses out there. To yeah. Check. <laughs> He's going to spot that one right down over there now. By the time of of course, we'll have these 50 cards on the post game report, between scores and highlights from uh, across the country. Second down, and those inches. Good chance here for the Bruins now to score a big touchdown for them. This would give a huge lift. Either tripped up is number 92. Larry Bergdine makes another stop. He has been impressive as a defensive lineman. As Gary told you, they go seven, eight deep along that defensive line. Just a freshman waiting for his turn. You know, you talk about the great practices that Oklahoma has, uh, Brent. One of the reasons, I think, is there's such great competition to play on this team. The peer pressure is, if you don't work hard, you ain't going to find the field. down. Olsen spins for the first down. It's first and goal. Junior Taylor. Oklahoma stayed with a zone with their five defensive back nickel package. They didn't blitz like usual and the front four could not put pressure. The UCLA offensive line gave Olsen enough time. You see it. Watch everybody sit. Just going to sit back and let everything happen in front of him, but third and short. That front four has to put pressure. Look at that up front. Good job by the center guards right there. And Olsen's able to hit the guy just enough for the first down. Leaving White and Ebo. And they're back there. Youngster brought it down. Crashing toward the end zone, and he is forced back at the goal line. 
Antonio Perkins right now is saying, guys, uh, you know, we got a turnover on the first uh, series, and uh, we didn't force a punt the second series. I'm going for a record here. Play has come in from the UCLA sideline. Second down and goal. The crowd here, Norman, urging the shooters. Ebal stopped in the backfield beautifully by the safety. Brandon Everage making a brilliant tackle for a loss at the goal line. Man, what an All-American performance here on this drive by Everage. He's got his web hands. He's going to come just outside the picture over here to the right side. Teddy Lehman, watch him squeeze in there the safety one hand. There's web hands. He just yanks them back. Great athlete. I believe UCLA is calling a timeout. Yes, they are. The Bruins are using up a timeout prior to the third down. The Sooners making a stand and a statement in Norman. Timeout. The uh, Peace Pipe Cole visitors here in uh, in Norman. Got to gotta wonder, don't you, Brent, if Carl Durrell will order Manuel White to be the tailback on this next one instead of Evo. A little more power, a little more punch, 220 pounds. Well, there is number 29 as he comes out now with the unit. He carried the load, gained 64 yards, 17 carries. Yeah, he Ebel does. now 18 yards and seven carries, but uh, he will be the feature here behind the fullback. It have two downs to make this in effect. You don't figure they're going for a field goal. Here comes the big man, and he is stuck. So here comes fourth down, and Everidge is in there again, number seven. I cannot tell you how impressive number seven has been here the last few minutes. And he's been like this for three years. He's not got a lot of credit because there's been se seniors in front of him, but this is the goal line defense, and UCLA is not accounting for the safety. That's a miss, uh, miss blocking protection, and UCLA is allowing the safety to get right inside that play. UCLA had a first and goal at the three-yard line. Now they are just inside the one on fourth down, and here they come. And a scoop on fourth down, young Maurice Drew picked up the fumble and dashed into the end zone. <laughs> I thought they weren't going to use any more trick plays. So Maurice Drew picking up the fumble on a fourth down here. It was a quarterback sne sneak. Drew Olson never got it. That it was not a fumble, so they would not have been allowed to score on fourth down had it been a fumble, and they have ruled it a backward pass and a live ball. That was a very important announcement from the field. What they're saying is Drew Olson never had possession of the ball. Had he had possession and it got knocked free, only Olson would have been able to cover it for a touchdown. That's the old Oakland Raider rule, isn't it? The, the, Dave, the Dave Casper rule. Yes. Yes, it is. Let's bat the ball for him to get a touchdown. <laughs> 35-16, and Justin Midlock to attempt the extra point. And Drew Olson would not have made it had he caught the snap. Yeah, he was basically stuffed in the middle. The Sooners had jumped the play. And uh, so the inability to control the snap actually leads to an unusual touchdown. There you see it. Backward lateral, scooped up by number 21, Maurice Drew, who scampers on into the end zone for the touchdown. And we've got a timeout as the uh, Bruins finally score on fourth down. Timeout. Superman. Welcome back to the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. At Oklahoma leading UCLA. 35-17, a little over five and a half to go here in the third quarter. Perkins back deep, along with Rankins. So they are the two deep men. Medlock to kick it off here for the Bruins. Wilson is airborne. 
and breeze it is back and this one will come out now on the 20-yard line so it'll be uh, Chuck Long orchestrating the, uh, the offense yeah and I'll tell you what I like about it reminds me of Mark Rick the old coordinator for Florida State he's honest what he tells his players you can count on it consistent every day doesn't change a lot of things he's a positive coach and mostly that he's humble you know when they brought Kevin Wilson in here the offensive coordinator from Northwestern to co-coordinate the run game. Some guys might rile up a bit, but he said, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to get to be a better coach, and it's helped the program. Kevin and Chuck work so well together. T1 Jones and a running back. You would think that Oklahoma would attempt to put the running game back together here to see if they can get this offensive line going. No, White on the roll. And it is Jones just short of the first down bucket. Let's get a Michigan update. And here's there, John. And here, Oklahoma with a bigger lead, 35-17 over UCLA. Second down and one. Jones stuffed again. And uh, the shotgun running game is not working. There's a flag for sure. falls. And Justin London stepping up to, uh, to make the stop. So Quentin Griffin uh, badly missed, at least here today, against a rather stout defensive front teams this year coach Grove doing a great job with that football team second down and five coming up now after the uh, penalty Jason White who senior today is 14 of 20 for 204 yards two touchdowns and uh, one interception so he's looking at the ball brothers anchoring at uh, defensive line Dave and Matt uh, there's a flinch up front that time again left guard move to Let's get this pillow. You know, we, we wondered, Dave and Try Matt. Snap. Illegal position. Well, there's the uh, signal against the, the Dave Ball. We asked now, right now which which you is a better football player. The fans have to decide. We have a polling number at home. They have to call and dial in. It's a whole process. But uh, I mean, you have to you have to guess for yourself. <laughs> Delightful, uh, Doug Beard, Dave, and, uh, and uh, Matt out of uh, Dixon, California. How about that? Twins anchor in the defensive line. Second down and 10 now. And White is back. Going to set the screen. Does underneath to Jones. And Chiller up with another stop. And uh, it was fun being around the Twins, Jack. Well, I don't know if you were their parents, you would think it was fun when uh, Dave and Matt surprised their parents when they were still in diapers and were put to sleep on mom and dad's waterbed. They discovered that if they extricated the pins and inserted them into the waterbed, they had an Olympic fountain. Mom and dad were none too happy when they saw the water exiting their waterbed. How long were they in diapers? Till they were six? <laughs> okay. Four <laughs> wide receivers on the field for uh, Oklahoma. Hit it on the release. And Jones goes after the ball. Did they call it a forward pass or a fumble? Huh? Right there is the mark. I wonder if that was Dave Ball coming from behind that time. Swatted that back arm. When you're the right defensive end, when you're coming around the corner, that ball is put right in your face. And instead of going for the sack, you go for the ball. Let's see if it was him. Yes, it was. 43. That's exactly what. That's the old LT play. Remember that? He stuck a pin in the quarterback. Yep. And uh, Ferguson is back. Hasn't had one block today. That's big news here in Norman. Four punts blocked already this year, but they have been clean. And now Black. And he is ripped at the 45 yard line and coming down Mark Bradley number one a one time defensive back scout team quarterback a little bit of everything so with Gary Danielson and Jack Arute, I'm Brian Musburger nice to have you along with us as we take a look at UCLA scoring its second touchdown a fluke touchdown ruled a lateral scooped up by Drew the young running back and he runs into the uh, corner of the end zone. Now on that goal line stand for Oklahoma, Brandon Everidge made three tackles, all three on first, second, and third down, and then almost made the tackle on fourth down to save a touchdown. The yardage story here. Wilson coming back. Oh, here he is again. Stood up by Everidge. Oh, oh, oh. B is he bringing the lumber. In on, he's just been that type of safety forever. He had to wait his turn. You mentioned Roy Williams was here. He got the pub last year. It was Andre Wolfolk. And now Brandon Everidge. He's all over the football field. He's a great tackler. And he has a nose for the football. 
Second down and 10 for Olsen and the Bruins. Three-step drop up high and deflected by number 49, Jonathan Jackson. It's that scheme. You rush from the field and you drop your weak defensive end to the short side just for that reason. Your end doesn't have to co cover as much space and you blitz from the wide side of the field just to take away that short pass right there. Great scheme by Mike Stoops. He had a big blow for Washington yes, State. He, he was all over the field on that day. New Year's Day when Oklahoma went out, captured it. Rose Bowl championship, Drew Olson facing third and ten. Here comes the blitz, and it is dropped by Ebel, trying to leak out yeah. on the left-hand side, and he's had another pass dropped, and that one should have been caught. Yeah, that wasn't going to go anywhere, though. Teddy Lehman was all over that. That was going to get one or two yards max, and... Uh, here comes the crowd comes roaring the for show. Perkins, because here it is now, five yards away from a new record. He should line up near the sideline because they're going to punt it to the right sideline. You can see the punter. He's tilted already aiming to the right. There he goes. He's outside the hash. And Perkins. And he's hit before he could get it. I mean, those yellow flags fly it everywhere. Well, that's one way to stop him. All right. Go down there and take a penalty. I mean, he was looking for the record, folks. There was... <laughs> I'm, and no, I'm not going to fair catch this. I want to get after it. Okay, I want to get those six yards. It's got to be. That's got to be a 15-yarder right here. No halo rule, but you don't need a halo rule on this one. What about a great catch by Perkins on that one, huh? That is hanging out of the ball as he goes down. Man, that's amazing. But uh, 15 yards is better than 70 yards. On a kicky team, 15-yard penalty. At the end of the run, first down. At the end of the run? <laughs> okay, Steve. <laughs> Maybe at the end of the tackle is a well, more you, appropriate sentence that time. You have to wonder why that strategy wasn't employed in one kick earlier because this game would be one touchdown closer. Now let's see what White can do. 35-17. 2.13 to go now in the third quarter. There's Ronaldo Works. Up behind his pulling tackle. Out of bounds on that far side. A ball. 43 for the Bruins. Very active here lately. Can't say enough about Ball and Chiller number 11. Those two guys just refuse to be blocked. They, they just don't get knocked down much. They force the ball carry to dodge them and allows the speed of the other people to catch up and stop the running game. You know, Ball, and I don't think he's quite on his level. David Pollock is who he reminds me of. He's, he's a hustling, all-out player on every play, and he doesn't get down on the grass a lot. The pros like young Ball. They say he'll play for somebody. And here comes Works again. First down. Well, now the running game seems to be settling it. You can bet that Kevin Wilson and Chuck Long have talked. They've talked to their offensive linemen. And uh, a good defensive front, and this is good time for Wilson. And, uh, you know, we've talked about Chuck Long. I, I think there's about four or five fellows on this staff that someday in the future will become head coaches. I don't know when that will be or if any of them are ready right now, but I think both defensive coordinators, Long and Wilson, someday will get opportunities. That's how good this coaching staff is. I think is. so, too. I agree with you. You know what's interesting about uh, what Mark Richt has done at Georgia is everybody thought Mark was a little too quiet, maybe not the fiery leader ne needed. Chuck is from the same mold. <laughs> Very measured, very disciplined, and, and it gets into the right situation. He's going to be a great head coach. Well, you know, uh, Mark Mangino went to Kansas and uh, struggled a lot last year. He's had a couple of, uh, of big W's uh, already this season. Now you think about that UNLV game and uh, Vegas going up and upsetting Wisconsin, beating Hawaii last night. Pretty good Las Vegas team. And uh, so Mangino's success will, will convince other schools to come look at this Oklahoma staff. Third down in inches. I guess he was just short as he reached over that time. There's a penalty flag thrown on this play. Now, lack of discipline from UCLA again is going to cost them a stop here because they stopped it short of a first down. Coach Durrell over on that far sideline. Again, it's uh, it would not be fair to uh, measure uh, what he has done, certainly not yet at UCLA. This one goes against the Bruins. I'm sure he is not happy, especially with his punt coverage team here today. And uh, his offense is still a work in progress. But uh, as you look ahead toward the Bruins and the uh, the Pac-10 schedule, they can they can learn off of off of a game like this. And 
they have been competitive at a couple of times in this contest today so there's a there's some hope for the future for Bruin fans don't you think Gary yes and, and, and I think when you talk to Carl you, you say what is the one thing you want to bring back to UCLA football and he said passion that's the word he chose you know it's important to play for UCLA that reminds me of, of how you build a program that's what Bo Schembechler did Jim Tressel did at Ohio State. It's important to play for UCLA. That's what he wants these guys to understand. Motion from the shotgun here on first and ten for the number one team in the country. Pump taken now. Takes it downfield and it's intercepted. Picked off by Matthew Clark. I'll tell you, Jason Wright got a hit just as he let that ball go. He's still on the ground. Slowly getting up. It was a hitch and go play that takes a little too, a little longer to go. I don't know if it was Dave Ball again. 43 or if it was an inside guy it was ball it looks like yes he got hit right in the back and kind of fallen on go hitch and go to the outside it was great coverage the corner never bet on bit on it excuse me so Jason White now remember he's a young man who's had a couple of knee surgeries the last two years Paul Thompson's his backup he had warmed up after the intermission uh, so much riding on Jason White he wondered out if the coaches will not let Paul Thompson take over a little bit later here in this in this ball game. And Everidge again makes a stop. We check in with John. 15 minutes left in that ball game, out west in Eugene, and uh, we've got injured Bruin down on the field right now, and uh, he's being tended to by the medical staff. I think it's Kazarian, isn't it? The, the tight end, yes. Blaine Kazarian, the blocking tight end. Mercedes Lewis is more of the receiving tight end. Pop up, guy. Okay. Here's the uh, backup quarterback, Paul Thompson, the 6'4 sophomore. And uh, starting to get up, and uh, he may be asking for his headgear over there on that side because uh, J.S. Yes, he is. So he's going to take some snaps now from the center. and uh, He has the longest run of the year for o Oklahoma, doesn't he, this year? Yes, he does. 50 yarders. 50 yarder. <laughs> So J.J. Hare comes in now at tight end for the Bruins. So drop deflected, picked off, hello end zone. No stopping number 13, Eric Bassey, who took the ricochet for six. Brandon Everidge again gets it. Those web hands on the little tick. And Bassey gets it. This guy's all over the field. This is a big time performance by Brandon Everett. He sneaks up inside and he makes plays on the run game. And watch this one. Reads pass, flies out to the flat, gets the web on it. And there it is. The touchdown for his teammate. Oh, man. What a game. All-American game. Bassey being congratulated by Benables on that Oklahoma sideline. Now DiCarlo for the extra point. And Oklahoma well on its way now to a uh, fourth consecutive victory. Brandon Everett, the man of the match in the second half. Brandon, I don't understand it. I would have voted for you, but Gary says we've got to give the MVP to Antonio Perkins. <laughs> There's no such thing as off the record with Brett Bus. <laughs> Just having a Boy, little fun, Brandon. You've had a heck of a game. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, it could go to any of those secondary Isn't guys. Isn't that the truth, Gary? Yes. I'm telling you, man. This is such a great look at defense, and uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm very impressed with Wayne Chambers here today. Eh? He's been very active, stepping in there for the injured Mitchell, who's uh, back receiving treatment. Uh, Jack Aroop told us a little bit earlier. Just think about the great players that Oklahoma has gone through and replaced them with just as good of players as Chambers, the next one. Absolutely right. Well, here come the Bruins again. Louis Drew was a little bit deeper that time. Now he comes up the field. Look at the daylight. 35 40. Here comes Maurice Drew. Breaking toward the end zone. And he goes the distance. 91 yards. His second touchdown of the game. And he has now put up two. So the freshman, the five foot eight inch freshman, returns the kickoff for six points for the Bruins. And he is out of a famous high school, De La Salle High School, 
top ranked high school again. They've got that great winning streak going out. And uh, I'm sure his parents, Dana and Andrea Drew back home, are so excited about watching that kickoff return. Uh, there's a young man who said he patterns his style after Barry Sanders. And uh, I want to tell you, young man, that looked like Barry Sanders coming down the sideline that time. Well, that's how Barry started. Remember at Oklahoma State when uh, that's how he burst onto the scene, turning kickoffs. I wonder why Oklahoma got a little cute that time and asked Carlo to punch a ball up high instead of just pump it into the end zone like he has been doing it all game. He tried to get a little cute. They pooched it high, and uh, Maurice Drew takes it. What, 10-yard line, 12-yard line? Nobody even comes close. Helmets flying yep. in the background as he sprints free. And uh, you know why he scored there? You know why he scored that? I don't see number seven out on the field, right. okay? There was no Brandon Everidge coming at an ankle to uh, to take him down. And, uh, you know, young Drew's hobbies, kind of interesting, swimming, all right, Southern California. But what's with the snowboarding? <laughs> <laughs> with wheels on the bottom, huh? I mean, that's, there you are. A football player was a couple of interesting hobbies. And uh, there, of course, is uh, Paul Thompson, whom we expect to see, checking with, uh, with Jason White. And uh, let's check in now with the Jackaroot on uh, Jason White's injury. Well, Brent, they were working on Jason White towards the backside of his ribs. They didn't do much to it. He got up. He's walked around. He says that he feels okay. But it looked for Paul Thompson to come in in this series. Now, there's a couple of reasons why they'll elect to do that. Brent, you know one of the reasons is because what we just saw with Jason White, they want to get this, this kid Thompson to have some snaps under center. Yeah, exactly, in case anything happens. In fact, on Monday... They give Jason White the day off, and they put in what is known around here as the Thompson package. He takes all the snaps in the Monday practice, and Jason White, again, coming off those two knee surgeries, standing over the sidelines, and here's Perkins, who had two punt returns for touchdowns in the first half, which truly really did turn this game in Oklahoma's favor. Now, let's check in on what Thompson did last week against Fresno State. And as Gary told you, it is the longest run of the season. Took it from a shotgun. Nice fake. Took off. And look at that stride, folks. He's going toward the end zone. They push him out of bounds after a 50-yarder. Hey, Brent, hold your horses. What happened down there, Jack? Well, Jason White put his helmet on and said, this is my team. I'm going back out there. Right. Well, yeah, I think the other thing, after UCLA returns the kickoff, can you make a change right now? There's still a whole fourth quarter to play. Well, that's an interesting point, and probably one of the reasons why the coaches went along with Jason in that situation. Right. Is that inside handoff. But Jones makes the most of it. Jason White is shaking. I thought He's Jason shaking. White He's was... Uh, he is shaking. ...was really looking strange yes. after that handoff on that situation. Well, he does never want to see us do a game again in his career. We were there. We were there both. There's the quarter coming to an end now. And uh, our pres presentation of college football returns after this message of word from our ABC station. The young man for UCLA, Maurice Drew, goes 91 yards. Now, look, there, there's the old legend. Out there. There's Barry Switzer. Won national championship here at Oklahoma. Uh, won a Super Bowl down with the Dallas Cowboys. And he's sitting right out there with the crowd. He's not heading for his car. He's sitting right in here watching this game, even though it's 42 24. Here they come again. Jones breaking through for the uh, Oklahoma first down and Emmanuel making the stop for the Bruins. Well, you got 42 points for Oklahoma, but only 64 yards rushing in the game. Now, you got to factor in the punt returns, of course, but you got to believe that Bob Stoops, Kevin Wilson, Chuck Long, even the Oklahoma players are wondering can we run the ball when we have to run it? Right now, they'd like to take some clock off. Get some first downs and end this game. And yeah, we saw the uh, the list of national championships, the seven years that the Sooners have won. The last one back in 2000 under Coach Bob Stoops, and they're one of the favorites again this year. And uh, you know, yeah. Gary, that just does not, not look smooth between the clean. running back and the quarterback. It's, it's not just, clean. They, they, it's you know, it's like a bumper car and bumper What's going on? Out I just there? saw uh, the, the coaches yelling out to Jason White to get his feet footwork down. And I'm just wondering if he's a little hobbled with that back and he's cheating and, and there's just not a good mesh. That has to be much smoother between the two guys. That's taken all the momentum off the running back as he goes through the line of scrimmage, which is real momentum. 
Lining him back up in that shotgun on second and nine. And here comes Jones, and he's brought down by Brandon Chiller, who's had a productive afternoon defensively. He's a fine-looking player for for UCLA. How do you got to feel if you're the UCLA defense? You give up less than 300 yards, but they got 40 some points, 42 points on the board. I mean, the defense is solid, but you give away those long big plays. The big plays had to go the opposite way, and it didn't happen in this game. Those two huge punt returns, the interception, yeah. big changes in this game. Third down and five. Three, and played hits Jones. Nice pass play inside of Clark. He rides it down. It might have been the toughest catch of the day for Jones, and he made it. Slant pass. Brandon Chiller's right there, number 11. He reads Jason White's eyes, but White sticks it in there, dropped all, draped all over him as Matt Clark, and uh, that's what you expect from Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones, again, he's an outfielder in baseball. Fine prospect. They were waiting for him to emerge as a, a top target here, and he certainly had until the drop season back in the other day. Here comes Jones now. And a reminder that tomorrow, Mia Hamm leads Team USA as they begin their quest to repeat as champions of the FIFA Women's World Cup. First up, European powerhouse Sweden. That's tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports Championship Television. So the gals go after another World Cup in soccer. And here, Oklahoma, stocking what they hope will turn out to be their eighth national championship, second and eight, leading UCLA, 42-24. Inside of 12 and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. White rolling left on the run, and he puts it in the hands of James Moses. He's tight end that time. He just rumbles inside the 15-yard line, and the Sooners are inside that red zone again. Larry Kern, defensive coordinator for UCLA, was very upset. He thought Jason White was over the line of scrimmage. He was close as he wrote, ran up in there, but they're like a, one of those boxers, I guess, Brent. Jason White's got a second win. That's a second coming to Joe Tiller over there. He folks. sure does look uh -huh. like it. Yeah, see, he's very upset. That is unbelievable. He probably he got confirmation upstairs from the, uh, the box. And uh, here comes Jason White now from the gun. Jones goes in motion through the formation. Daylight and Jones first on the bounds. Well, he's at the five yard line. The official field judge goes flying. Jared Page forcing him out of bounds. Well, Calvin Shoshone, number 70, came around on that play again, just like the last touchdown. Cleaned it out, got in the way, and made uh, one of those uh, 300 pound blocks that uh, those little running backs can run behind. So it's first and goal at the one yard line. Cameraman in the way or something. Oh, is the official clear. okay down there yeah, on the sideline? Somebody, somebody might have got bumped. If, he's flexing that knee down yeah. there. The field judge, he, he took quite a, quite a tumble down there. And I think he, he just kind of rolled back into something uh, as we get back out of the way. First down and goal. Great defense by Ball. Oh. Dave Ball making a huge play for a loss, and it'll be second down and goal. And uh, number 24, Emmanuel comes around too. There's Ball on one side. Emmanuel 24 comes around on the other side, just stuffs it like average. There you see the safety. That's the guy you have trouble accounting for when you're running in the middle. You got to tell the back it's your job to beat the safety. It was not a good job by the tight end that time, unable to block Ball, and so it'll be second down and goal. Picks his way a little slowly and nothing happening that time. And London up to make a stop with a penalty flag down. So now it is the Bruins' turn to stage a little bit of a uh, goal line stand down here so far. But they were offside that time, and uh, that's going to give him a free shot. There you go. You see Carl saying that. A lot that. of mistakes here yeah. by UCLA. <laughs> He's really still upset, not with that play, but with the bootleg pass play. He's 
wonder now why they don't send Paul Thompson in there under center and just run the quarterback sneak. They're uh, they're inside of a yard, about a half yard to go here. Second down, and uh, that shotgun look that they use Jason White in. Let's we'll see where, how they line him up. They're going to line him up right up underneath center. Here. Why don't they try that backward pass one? That works for UCLA. <laughs> and over the top comes Jones. No signal yet. Everything made it but the ball. And that's right. Never did make it. No. And the linesman saying right down. So Isn't that reminiscent uh, for Oklahoma fans with that number 20 going over the top like that? Billy? Yeah, Billy Sims, boy. Kiwan gets it. Gets hit with his feet right there by Justin London, and everything goes but the ball. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> feet don't count. Nope. Third down and goal now for the. Uh, this is telling, though, service. isn't it? This is telling about Oklahoma's one Achilles heel. Well, Ronaldo works his back end. Going behind runners. Heading one in. He dives for the touchdown. So works. Dives in. So, man, that schooner is going to be rolling, I'm telling you. Closing in on half a century. Ten minutes to go. Up 48-24. And all those works with his second touchdown of the game. Same play, basically. Works a little bit bigger. Follows the big guy, Shashan, and then just kind of falls into the end zone. And now Trey to Carlo. Good, and it's 49-24. Yo, uh, Jackaroo, saddle up down there, partner, and take us to commercial, will you? Well, Brent, it's one of the greatest college traditions of all time. I'm riding on the Sooner Schooner. They celebrate after every single touchdown this play. We go around here in Memorial Stadium, and we'll be back with more. Whoa, Nelly! <laughs> I don't have any doubts about who's number one right now, but uh, really? Sarah, you agree with that? Well, I think they got the best defense of the country, and they throw the ball well, but I think you have to be able to run the ball to win the championship. Well, they got special yeah, teams now. Well, they got great special teams, at least against UCLA. They got great special teams. <laughs> and four punts blocked before today. We'll see. <laughs> It'll all shake out like it always does. Yeah, okay? it sure does. Uh, our Pacific Life game summary, just to give you an idea now as we uh, look back at this game. Perkins with those two electrifying punt returns, 214 yards. Still five shy, hasn't been able to return a punt in the second half. Remember, they took a penalty and smacked him. Passing game working, the deflection by Everage, passing, running into the end zone, and the Sooners have put them up on the scoreboard every which way right now with about 10 minutes to go they lead 49 to 24. There's average up there in that linebacker position again. Wilson looking downfield waiting for Come on, receiver to play and pulls that away to be second down and 10 now. Young Drew Wilson, sophomore. Growing up here at the helm, uh, UCLA not sure when Matt Moore will be able to return, but it's still several weeks away. So uh, Drew Olson has a chance to win friendship stuff. Interesting, his daddy, his daddy was an athlete. As you uh, take a look at Matt Moore over on the sideline, uh, number seven, six foot and four inch sophomore. Won the starting. Lost for at least yep. uh, a month, and in the spring he uh, won the starting job against Drew Olson. Now I want to start his father. Drew Olson's father was an athlete at UCLA, not a football, but he was captain of the rugby team. So uh, there's a father who grew up rough and tough. Well, and, you know, uh, that, was kind of, that was kind of a rugby play they scored on, wasn't it, on yes, that it scrum was. right there? Just, you, uh, Dad would have recognized you that play. You kick it out, you kick it yeah. out, and scoop it and go. Sure, Rich. sure. The pops <laughs> probably taught him that in the backyard. He said, come on, Drew, let me... Let me show you. You know, I always like. You know what I like about best about the rugby guys, the sport is. After you get done, you always go out and drink a couple mugs of beer. We really always like. That. Time for meeting out. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. John will be along. You'll have uh, scores and highlights, and I'll tell you. We haven't heard from John, so I'm assuming Michigan stalled down a little bit out there. Deflected, and Teddy Lehman got the deflection for the interception that time, and the Sooners back in business again. And wouldn't we now expect to see Paul Thompson? That might be a good idea. You know, you got to get him ready for the rest of the year anyway. Might as well put him in there and play a little bit. 
There's that nickel package again. Teddy Lehman right there, just reading the cross receiver. Everage in the middle of the formation takes one. Throw, bobble, there's the drops again. UCLA out of sync. It's been a little bit of rugby football on offense for UCLA. They've really never found anything they could hang their hat on after they stopped being able to run the ball early in this football game. Start early down here being a Sooner fan, let me tell you. Great fans down here. The Alabama folks were very impressed when they came in last year. And I hear that they returned the favor, and look who's back. Jason White getting some reps. Let's see if they don't go deep with Jason White one last time and try to get him a touchdown pass. And they're three wide now. Remember that shotgun? Ronald's blocking for him. And, uh, second down and 10. And uh, let's check in. Dan Fouts out there is uh, uh, hanging on doing that game. An ex uh, duck quarterback working with uh, Keith Jackson. I'm being partial with that one. Wasn't that your number one team last week? Michigan? Michigan? Yeah. Well, I thought they were very impressive against Notre Dame, <laughs> but I said you got to hold off till you see Oklahoma. I know. I said they'd have trouble in Eugene. Really? I think that's a that's a tough spot to come in out of. Speaking of who's number one, folks, remember the singular wireless poll. Which school should be ranked number one this week? Now, uh, yeah, we got the uh, we got the results. Uh, Haven't well, at least if the votes are still coming in. It's, it's like Florida. Yeah, we're overloaded. And hold on, hold on. We got a couple of priests. There's a hanging Chad coming there. <laughs> and uh, wait a minute, Palm Beach County hasn't voted yet. We got to have some votes for Miami down there. You Third down. We'll get this all straightened out though, folks. Never you mind. Uh, Chicago is now voting late, and. Uh, here comes White, and he's tackled by Brandon Schiller, number 11. UCLA, UCLA very lucky on that one. They had a blitz call. They checked it off the zone. Half the team heard it. Half the team didn't. Oklahoma receiver running wide open, and uh, Jason just didn't have enough time to spot him. Man, do I like Coach Stoops and the staff down here. I can't tell you how impressed I am by the way they recruit, develop players, have the youngsters mature under Stoops. This is a 41-yard uh, field goal attempt. This will put him over 50 points. I guess we're going to have UCLA defense pretty well respected here. That was a 6-3. And DeCarlo nails it. He sends it through. 52-24. Oklahoma, number one, and Rose. Oklahoma and uh, now remember we told you about the singular wireless poll who should be number one oops all this shows me is that they got more money and more telephones in oops. Michigan oops come on what broken eagle get on a telephone down here <laughs> get them sooner up there of course they deserve to be number one here's a kick now on through the end zone and coming out on the uh, on the 20 yard line well I you know Gary has uh, has told you what the what the biggest problem is with the uh, the Sooner team they have rushed for only 86 yards here today and it just has not been a smooth looking running game with Jason White back there in the shotgun Quentin Griffin of course gone to the NFL now playing with the Denver Broncos suffered a broken leg early in training camp but uh, as we understand healing may be completely healed and uh, could even be in uniform on Monday night here on ABC when the Broncos have that big one at the 8 central time. And John and Al of course. The Broncos and Raiders always fun to, to watch that game. What a great Monday night or the other night with the uh, Dallas Cowboys in overtime over the uh, New York Giants. Four men rush for the Sooners. Olsen's pass and that time Bragg extending for it could not hang on. But he's had a he's had a fine day. Craig Bragg half dozen passes for 48 yards he's been the punt return man Olsen now 13 at 25 he's just shy of 100 yards no well, touchdowns and two interceptions and accuracy again well, really continues to be his number one absolutely problem. you can't get a guy more wide open than that I mean Brandon Everidge ran underneath the route he had Bragg coming across the middle of the field 10 yards in the open and he throws it about uh, eight feet off the ground instead of six feet there's the four-man rush and five DBs back expecting Olsen and instead they come back with the running play and that's Maurice Drew who is stepping up. Teddy Lehman, All-American, is comfortable in space, wraps up and hits people, makes the tough tackles inside, truly an All-American football player, smart, plays different positions and has been around here it seems like you know this is a well, that's why he's an all-american he's been maybe the best linebacker in the country the last two years yeah coach Stoops with another great defense facing uh, 39 well, 
down now, and uh, so Antonio Perkins gets one more crack at it. Well, they went over. Efridge goes over, gives him a slap on the head, and says... They're very well aware here <laughs> of what he has to do now. 214 yards, folks. Now, will UCLA give him a chance? Now, that, that that's a question. Remember, they ripped into him and took a penalty the last time. So, uh, Chris Cluey. And they, they kicked one out of bounds, and they ripped into him, right? Yeah, sure. The rest have been turnovers. That's it. <laughs> so we've hit it right around that 10 yard line. Good one to return. Perkins to the right's got a gunner on him. And hit right as he caught it. And the ball is picked up by Bassey over on the other side. And the chiller leads the defense. You can see that that was the focus of UCLA here in the second half. Determined. Determined not to let Perkins shake and bake here in the second half. And uh, they've done that. Maybe it's a little too late. Time out. The six foot four inch all Thompson onto the field now to clean up. Weighs 200 pounds, has worked hard in the system. Noah Allen, incidentally, has uh, moved up past Brent Rawls to the third unit as quarterback, but they're very fond of Thompson and the coaching offices and the effort and the work that he puts in. And of course, one more injury away from taking this team over right now. And uh, on first down, as Hickson with his first carry. Powerful run by Hickson. We'll be seeing more of him if he does that close to midfield. Well, you know, uh, Gary and Jack and I, we've talked about, you know, at some time during a game, we have to give out an award, and uh, we'll call it the a mad moment of the game. And uh, after this snap, we will uh, show you why we call it the <laughs> mad moment of the game. And uh, who and uh, why we picked this as the turning point. It was the mad moment of the game, certainly from an uh, Oklahoma standpoint. And the, uh, the handoff again to Hickson. A powerful run as he crosses midfield. All right, folks, here's your mad moment of the week. The maddest move of them all. Antonio Perkins once did a 4-3-1 in the 40. A 42-inch vertical leap, able to leap, tall building to the single bound. Born in Lutton, Oklahoma, the mad move for the week. And that really broke the back of the game, don't you think? Yeah, the second absolutely. punt return? Second punt return was the best. And uh, Dante Hicks, a sophomore running back, runs in to uh, Leslie, as we check in with uh, Jack, I want to tell you that you and the schooner was the second place. Runner up. Mad move. I want to recount. Be, be ready, though, just in case something happens hey, to our good hey, one. Grant, we've got superheroes. We've got mad moves. We also have a magician out on the field. Paul Thompson is an amateur magician. When he came here, he wowed a lot of his teammates with some of his magic moves. Now they say, put away the magic. Wow us with your football moves. Yeah, well, you have it. he may be magician-like if he fakes and keeps one here as a kind of a magical with the football. Third down and eight. He's going to take off again. Remember, he's electric running. So to the first down. Well, let's get an update on Oregon, Michigan, and here's John again. Mm, John, thanks for that update because that could be another of the uh, contenders falling by the wayside. If Michigan can't come back, then they slip. Then Georgia would fall back, and LSU becomes a dark horse. What a day in college football. Time out. The Oklahoma Law Center, you'll probably find Maurice Perret over there um, studying some of his options and what lies ahead in a story that just won't go away, Gary. It's just starting. I know. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? The Buckeyes uh, struggling but prevailing against uh, a tough Bowling Green team. 52-24 here. No question about number one. And uh, certainly the uh, the and Pencil boys, or I guess the computer boys, and the uh, the AP and uh, certainly the coaches poll. They'll keep Oklahoma uh, number one. As we take a look at the Chevrolet drive summary, a couple of touchdown passes now by White. A couple of rushing touchdowns, two punt returns by Perkins, an interception return by Bassey, and a DiCarlo field goal. So just about every which way that you want, uh, they have been able to score here today. Ronaldo works, incidentally, rushed for their touchdowns. They took a delay, back the punter up five yards. And this one, and, uh, it's out of 
Garbanz. Let's go back to uh, Gary's upset formula and give out some grades to UCLA. Well, nothing really worked. They they jolted them a little bit early in the first quarter, but that was about it. They didn't uh, first down. They didn't even get over 50 percent. Obviously. That was an OU stat, the special teams. Tackling, I thought they did a pretty good job of. I thought the defense still, you know, gave up 300 plus yards, but uh, no real offense in the upset formula. Wasn't there today. Yep. True enough. It went ahead 10 7. Right. And it seemed to anger over. More than rattle him, it, it angered him. I think that's a bit, that is a good description of what happened. Maybe just the better team won. Yeah. 19 3 favorite coming in. A solid three touchdown favorite. And uh, you know, just running the clock out here. So put another one in the hands of Bragg, the junior from San Jose, and Teddy Lehman making the stop. And we want to thank them for our aerial shots here today, courtesy of our friends at the Outback Steakhouse, proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl. The Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion, provides aerial coverage for sporting events across the country. I want to ask our fine director, Larry Cam, again, because the blimp came down all the way from Ann Arbor. Larry, they told you how many hours did it take to get down here? It was 25 hours to come down from uh, from Ann Arbor. It took Gary Daniels a little bit quicker than that. Yeah. Uh, from the jet airplane. Man, that's amazing. First down and 10 now. This is down the distance in trouble, and down he goes. And Devoracek, the defensive tackle from Lake Dallas. I'd rather do 25 hours in a blimp than 25 hours to Disney World from Michigan with four kids in the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of experience over here. I thought he was going to say, I'd rather do 25 hours in a blimp than uh, four quarters against the Oklahoma defense. But <laughs> Seemed like it, hasn't it? It has, huh? How's the uh, Jagger Root got our escape plan, our next mad move of the day? <laughs> the motor's running, Brent. Ah, the motor's running. Thank you, Jack. He's one of the best real men in all of college football. We want to thank in advance the police department here in Norman for getting us to the highway so we can catch the airplane. Thanks, fellas. I know it's going to be a great escape. How about that? Thank you. I don't know if that'll work or not. Anyway, we've got 320 to go. Oklahoma putting up a little over half a hundred here. And uh, they'll stay number one. We, we look ahead next week. I know they have to go on the road. They go up to Iowa State. If they get a bye next week. Are they, are they well, their next game yes. is Iowa State. And that's why it was so good to rest Derek Strait, I think. They get it now, a real good rest for Strait. One of their, you know, I mean, they got another guy that, that isn't even out here on the field that is a good player. This is, this is interesting about Bob Stoops. He said he would not start Strait just to keep that record string intact. Under any circumstance, yes. he would do now, Mike Stoops indicated, well, we might run him in and keep Street going. We know who runs this football team. This is this is uh, older brother Bobby, and uh, now he's gotten two weeks rest for his All-American corner, uh, getting ready to go on the road against Iowa State. The, this is just such a good coaching staff as they look down. And, of course, we'll be there on October 11th in Dallas for the uh, annual shootout with the, uh, the Texas Longhorns. Could be trouble with Missouri, huh? We're up at Colorado. Uh, a couple teams we don't know much about. Of course, Oklahoma State, they don't even want me to talk about Oklahoma State game. But, uh, nevertheless, today's Chevrolet, Chevrolet players of, the, uh, of this game are uh, Maurice Drew from UCLA. 120 kick return yards. 91-yard touchdown. Also scored his first touchdown rushing. And, of course, no question about Antonio Perkins. The mad move of the game for Antonio. In a recognition of their efforts, uh, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship. Can we say it was unanimous? 3-0 count vote on this one this week. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> These private jokes are just getting killed. They're killed. Either, I when, you're, when it's more than 20 points, you can you have just, you know, you a lot of lax, a little leeway. Third down now. And Olsen deflected into play. Chambers got his hand, and it was a Chambers. Lewis Baker, oh, young Lewis 16, Baker yes. on the field. And, I thought uh, it was 15. It was. A, yeah, the, I'll tell you what, he impressed the coaches with that drop that time, yep. and he's a young man with a future at linebacker. There's just, there's no end to the talent pool Absolutely that they have recruited not. and they are developing down here at Oklahoma. They say Baker's going to line up in Teddy Lehman's spot next year. Is that right? That's Anto what they say. Antonio Perkins, one more try here. Here huh? we go now. Needs the five to they tie got, it. They got to hold. They got to hold up the win. wings. They got to hold up those guys. Yeah, the gunners are getting free on. Massey's trying to get that gunner over the right. He cannot. Here he comes now. Can he get it? Perkins slips. Got it. 
Perkins for the record. Breaks free. Looking for the third touchdown. Down the sideline. Antonio Perkins. Three punt return touchdowns and a new NCAA record. Get a celebration Man. penalty. Doesn't that one deserves a celebration penalty, doesn't it? Take the penalty. A 65-yard return that time. 74, 84, and 65 for Antonio Perkins, our player of the game. And that, folks, was your mad move of the fourth quarter. Wow. 277 punt return yards. And that's the most touchdowns scored by any player in one game. Several players had returned two punts for touchdowns in a game, but never has anybody taken three to the end zone. And Antonio Perkins lights up the sky. A little frosting down here, if you will, on the strawberry shortcake, the whistle. But it's good. You know, and so you got to give Antonio Perkins credit. He stayed patient. He stayed tough. He caught those punts with that guy right in his face the last couple times. He got hit. Remember, he caught that one. This time, depends. He trusts his blockers on the gunners to the outside, and this time, catches it with enough space and takes uh, that that's one of the damnedest things i've seen being able to take three punt returns to the house ucla completely out of gas and he just again nearly trots into the end zone this is one of the few times they didn't get a turnover they get the punt catches it makes the first wave miss again and there he is in the space. Kind of interesting, you get a shot of a guy running and nobody in the white, even on the picture screen. So we came to Norman for a record-breaking performance today by Antonio Perkins. The one thing we haven't pointed out to you folks, he also is an outstanding defensive back. He's a corner here. Now, Wolfolk gone to the NFL, he occupies the other side of the field defensively. He's not just a punt return specialist he's a heck of a defensive player being congratulated by his uh, teammates here well we thought last year that Oklahoma's defense was one of the best three defenses in college football along with Miami and Ohio State and they're almost all back this year and they look better to me this year than they did a year ago Who takes it in? two and a half minutes Six career touchdowns on punt returns for Perkins. So uh, he's got a shot at Jack Mitchell. You would have thought nobody could match that seven career punt return for touchdown record, but he can do it. He's got a new NCAA record. Obvious Oklahoma record. Couple of NCAA records. Most yards in one game. Most touchdowns in one game. So he will be the uh, the folk hero down here for this week, at least. And with a week off, they'll still be raving about Antonio Perkins. And coaches will be looking over time to stop it. Here comes Drew. And uh, the freshman still going. Had a great career, kid. Yeah, High school. Was had played on that great team out Lewis there. De La Salle with that winning Hanford. record still intact. He had a great fall camp, too. Really threatened to be the starter at tailback. And then had, you know, he had two touches in the Colorado game. Fumbled both times and uh, got to work his way back up into the lineup again. First down. Another carry. Stuffed in there. Layman's still on the field defensively for the Sooners. Yeah, a lot of pride uh, in this defense about stats and, and finishing a football game. And uh, they don't like to see people going up and down the field against even late in the game. And last week they let Fresno State do just that. And they, they weren't happy about that. The coaches were able to, uh, to rally the troops early this week as they got ready for UCLA. And they put a... They put up 50 moves. You know, the interesting though, that, uh, Brent, they've got uh, Teddy Lehman at the middle linebacker spot. Maybe they're getting him some snaps just in case he gets back used to running that middle linebacker spot. There now, free is Greg. And also, they're using Young Baker. Right. Because all the, the rest will of the, spot. everybody else is subs on the field. So what they're trying to do is get a few snaps for Teddy at middle linebacker just in case they have to make that move. 
Americans with 277 yards and three touchdowns. The entire UCLA offense, 231 yards and two touchdowns. And kudos to uh, Sun Devil Man down there in the truck. And now that, that certainly is Bob Goodrich just told me that is our second half out of wax stand right there. Let me tell you. Back now comes Olsen in trouble. Run now for the hole and slides for the first down. And on the 25 yard line. Well, the Bruins need to go home and uh, basically just forget about this and uh, start to regroup and get ready for that Pac 10 schedule. I believe that they have, yes, yeah, San Diego State in Pasadena is their next game. So one more game to to fine tune things I, before I've, they get in the conference race. I've seen some uh, publications that ranked UCLA's schedule as the toughest in the country this year. And, uh, you know, this this team is not yet hitting on all cylinders, and uh, they have uh, in front of them a lot of tough football games. And, of course, what Oregon's doing today now right. is they move way up, but their game with Oregon, I believe, is in Pasadena. That's a nice run by Maurice Drew. Against the backup defenders for uh, Oklahoma. <laughs> Nevertheless, he's had a kickoff return <laughs> Here for Here goes touchdown. number 7 and 97 in the game. <laughs> Tommy Time Harris White. comes in and uh, definitely, uh, Gary, they're using more than laymen out there <laughs> trying exactly. to prevent this touchdown. They, they put their guy, every time they gain five yards, another starter went in. Yeah, they, uh, they do not want to give up 30 points in this game. And uh, the Bruins have exhausted their timeouts. So they've got 50 seconds to work with. They can still get a first down just inside the three yard line, which would stop the clock. And uh, Darrell talking to his staff, uh, students with the headset off, of course. And I think that he has protected the, uh, the number one ranking of Oklahoma. And there's Drew Olson over on the uh, sideline with Carl Durrell, the first year head coach at UCLA. It was indeed a challenge. I believe the last time that UCLA has beaten the number one, I think, now maybe I'm wrong, but I think it was Dick Vermeil and the Rose Bowl team picking off Ohio State back in the 70s. That was the last game that Vermeil coached the Bruins before he was hired away by the Philadelphia Eagles. And of course, then Terry Donahue, a longtime success story. He's up in the front office now with the 49ers. Do you know Carl will never want to come back to Oklahoma to play a number one team again? Came in here, lost as <laughs> a player, and now, uh, now as a coach. 59-24. Here it comes now. Can the Sooners keep them out of the end zone? Right there. Motion back. Middle goes underneath the ball to the nine-yard line. Remember, they're out of timeouts. Teddy Lehman up to make the stop. So it's going to be the, the final 30 seconds. They can get at least, at least a couple more snaps, but they need to hurry it up for just a little bit. Need to get it going. As soon as we uh, finish, Michigan just punched one in. And uh, I think, uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma used a timeout. Remember, they had a couple. And the strange that they would give them time to regroup on offense, but uh, nevertheless, Oklahoma using one here with uh, with 20. What time's your airplane up in Oklahoma City? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful post office in this area of the country, let me, let, isn't it? Let me ask Bob and Larry if we can see those uh, mad moves of the day <laughs> by Antonio Perkins, okay? So three touchdowns, 74, 84, and 65, and... Uh, you think you'll be seeing these a little bit on uh, ESPN? Do you think Sports Center will highlight Antonio Perkins? I think so. You'll be the star all across the country here tonight, man. You just a record-breaking performance, first time in NCAA history. And anybody has taken three to the end zone, and he did it with style, moves, speed. 4-4 four, four guy, 4-3 four, guy at one time in the 41-inch vertical leap. Just an well, outstanding get, athlete. You Gary. have to believe that UCLA has great athletes that can run, cover punts, and you wonder the strategy of, out, you know, just kicking it long down the middle every time. You know, you got to come up with something else, I think. There it is for the Bruins now. 22 seconds left on this second down. Lofts it. 
caught in the corner of the end zone, out of bounds, Bragg. No touchdown, 15 seconds to go. Nice move by Bragg. You ran a slant corner that time. Came inside. Oklahoma's been jumping on those uh, slant routes. This time he came in, went back out, and the ball was overthrown. Kind of fun to watch it. You know, the game is over, and, and these guys are battling to get, to get six more, and the Sooners are doing their darndest to keep them out of the end zone here. Third down. James Olsen again. That's first down. That stops the clock with 10 seconds to go, and they got a first and goal right now as Ryan Smith, the senior from Flower Mound, Texas, picks up the first down on that reception. And now uh, eight seconds left. Drew could come up right now, Olsen, and just ground the ball real quickly to stop the clock and regroup. Or just run a play, run a fade. He's got Reese Drew. Maybe they can try that rugby play again. Snap it through his legs. He stops the clock. Now they'll go over and uh, try to make the most of the eight seconds here. And it's amazing to me how many in the crowd are still hanging in to see well, if the defense. You know what's amazing to me is that how many a crowd are here to watch, yet they're booing that they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why are you uh, this, here? This game, let's, uh, we've got one percolating out in the West Coast. Let's send you right now to John Saunders in New York. There you go. ABC switched to the Oregon-Michigan game right at the end of the OU game, but the final score again. OU 59, UCLA 24.